Good afternoon, guys. Good evening. What's up, Haster? What's up, Big Head? Welcome on in, guys. Uh, today is going to be a little bit different. Um, I had some issues with... Oh, that's just my... Uh, uh, it's my phone telling me I'm live. Apparently, a couple of minutes after I go live. Um, today's going to be totally different. Uh, it's not a game stream today. It's going to be a... I don't even know what you call it. Let me just delete some stuff here. And, uh, yeah. Just make sure I'm on silent here on Discord. Hey, Karn. Welcome. Yeah, so the title, uh, what did I put the title as? Modding AE to SC. So, yeah, it's going to be a little bit of that. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of tech stuff, yeah. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit of starting tech stuff. At least some of the stuff that I do, um, that when I, I have, I have people ask me questions, you know, in the various discords, or, or even if, you know, they're not directed at me, if it's something that I can answer, I will. Um, and then, of course, you know, it leads into other conversations like, uh, well, what do you use? How do you go about doing certain things, etc. You know, and we've all been there with, you know, a restart. Um, I'm actually going to do all this live today. I'm not expecting uh, a ton of people in here, which is totally fine with me. This is sort of how I started off on YouTube when I started my YouTube. Well... I, I had a YouTube channel, but not with any of my own personal content. But this is essentially the same thing. Um, first time doing it on the Twitch platform. Hey, Mace, what's up? Welcome in. Um, so yeah, we're going to do a what I call a clean wipe and reinstall. And maybe we'll get through some mods. Uh, I was looking at my list from... The stream yesterday, I spent a good, you know, two, almost three hours, it was almost 3.30 in the morning uh, last night when I tried to uh, correct what I thought was an area edit, but it wasn't. Um, it was something else in my setup at the time. I went looking for it. I was honestly just so tired that, and there's a couple, and, you know, with the new list and things that are updated... You're going to like some stuff, and you're, you're also not going to like other stuff. Um, graphically, I loved it. Graphically, I have to say, it, it's it was one of the most comprehensive updates I've seen in a long time. And I know another one is due out fairly soon. Um, yeah. I was hoping a uh, clean wipe is a skill most people have. That's asking too much. Uh, you're probably uh, not wrong there, Karn. <laughs> um... What I what I was using was the current Nolvis I will show you. Uh, natural lighting. And I absolutely love the graphics. So if you're not familiar, it's Nolvis.net. Uh, Vec and the team over at Nolvis do a really good job with putting together what I think is probably one of the most uh, graphically pleasing looking setups. There's a lot of stuff in here. And when I go to guide version, what I was using was the Ultra, the natural lighting which you can see he's got it labeled as new. There's a light version for those of you under, uh, what I think is says his recommendation, under 11 uh, gig of v, uh, gigabytes of VRAM. But uh, I found that when I ran a previous itineration of this with my 2070, which is 8 gig, it ran fine as long as I was able to uh, not use a lot of the 4K stuff. My monitor is not a 4K monitor. And a lot of the stuff, I f like smaller stuff, like the jewelry, there's really no need for 2K jewelry at all. You're, you're wasting your VRAM and uh, a bunch of other little things. Now, it looks great if, if you've got like one of the uh, better newest graphic cards. I'm looking at 3080s and up. Uh, and even the, I think, what is it, 3070 Ti has good VRAM spec on it. Although I, I don't know offhand what that is. Anyway, so I was using the natural lighting version. What I'm going to wind up doing is I'm going to delete everything. I will show you guys. You may see I've already got the downgrade patcher, the full patcher right here. 
if you're curious as to what this is, it's this mod right here, 57618. Uh, Helgari's done this. He's the uh, creator of the Wabajack. What I'm running is the full uh, patch. I don't know why it's doing this. This one. Now, this is 3 gig, right? This is a manual download. I know it's got a mod manager download, but manually download this. Just leave this here because it's just it's a straight executable, okay? But we need to do a few things first with that. So having said that, here's my Skyrim game folder. I always pin it to the quick access. I'm going to leave this open, but we're going to minimize this. Here is my Steam, and here is my current setup. You can see 1,050 total mods, 931 plugins. This is the way I do it. If you guys do it a different way, totally up to you. Uh, but this is the way I do it. So in downloads, anything that's uninstalled, right? I just make sure I'm around the uninstalled in sec uh, section because sometimes you do, sometimes you uninstall something and it'll populate down here. And I always keep my status, uh, I keep it status up and I'll show you why when I start downloading things. Uh, what it means is that if you go in order and you don't hide them, the most recent downloaded mod will always populate at the top so that you can go in order from top to bottom. Just the way I do it, everybody's going to be a little bit different. Hey, Padinsky, welcome in. Yeah, yeah, it does. And the thing is, uh, Cardin, um, Novus ran fine for me. It was just, uh, once I enabled Frostfall, I was, I was sitting there thinking to myself, well, you know, maybe Frostfall really is the tipping point with my gear. And you guys could see my gear right on my you know, about page, the main page there. Um, I have 12 gig VRAM with my thir my 3060. You know, should be able to handle this. And it does, and it ran fine. Uh, but I think with, I thought, with adding Frostfall in, uh, that was probably the tipping point because I was able to reproduce the crash. Well, I shouldn't say crash, it was a freezing issue. And there was no, uh, there were no logs, uh, no net, uh, that script framework, anything in the overwrite, I, I checked here, obviously checked the notifications, nothing was there. Um, really quick, another thing, if the dark mode here is hard for you guys to see, let me know and I will put it back to vanilla. It's going to go back to vanilla anyway, and I'll show you why. Hey Strudel, welcome in. And Nurble, lurk and work. Much appreciated for the lurk, Nurble, thank you. And Strudel with all the shoutouts. If we miss somebody, I apologize. Yeah, it's not going to be a game stream today, so... Let me see who's who else popped in here. Who am I missing? I want to say hi to everybody. Uh, did, uh, did I miss anybody? Also, uh, for the links, uh, just a quick plug here. Uh, Great Padinsky is in the process of doing his own Wabajack list, and I believe, uh, GP, what, you hit you hit your 300 mod mark. Was it last night or the night before? When I was in the stream watching? I didn't know the total number by the end, but I know you posted it in your server. Uh, and it's coming along really nice. It really is, from what I've seen, from the testing you've done. I won't likely see much of what's going on in chat. Oh, that's okay, Strill, no worries. Beowulfs, what's up? Dark mode is all right, but the neon. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, here we'll we'll set this back. This is like I said, this is gonna get changed anyway. We'll just go back to none, and that'll cl that'll clear everything up. Now I have these set personally. I can go in and change this, but like I said, we're gonna we're gonna get rid of all this. Actually, let me keep dark mode on for a second because it's. We'll just keep it at normal dark. So I can well maybe not. I hate when it does this. Uh, we'll go dark orange. That's what I had it at, I think. All right. Uh, anything that's already uninstalled, uh, I always delete uninstalled downloads, which should be pretty quick. Now, the other thing, too, is from here, from Mod Organizer, you could do one of two things. Um, you can delete all the installed, and it's going to take a, you know, about a minute or so. Delete them that way. Uh, I do things a little bit different. So I'm gonna, whew, I'm gonna minimize this. Um, let's go to my library, special edition here. So that you could see, no Bethesda anniversary edition update. Thank God.
because that would mean I wouldn't be able to do the patcher, which means this whole entire thing would pretty much be moot. And dark dark mode is better. I'll switch it back to dark mode uh, once because I'm going to reinstall some things. There's there's a few things here. So uh, what I like to do when I start clean is let's switch over to my modding tools. There are a few things I do. Bethany gets deleted. Dindulad, and I you can see I kept the archive in there. Dindulad gets deleted. Uh, let's go back to modding tools. Do I have anything else? MO2 is going to get deleted. Uh, SSC edit is not because I have the current update version and I don't have a lot of SSC edit scripts added into this aside from all geared up, which will not change. So there's really no point to doing this unless you really feel like re-adding them in. Kind of pointless to me, but unless, you know, SSC edit itself has updated from... 4.04 to like 4.05 or 6 or whatever the newest version is, then, then you can, you know, reinstall. Um, is there anything else? Xlot gen. Do I have an output with this? Edit scripts. I don't think I do. This should be fine. Although, well, we'll leave it for now. Um, these are not needed. Mater smash I haven't used. Loot. Loot itself gets deleted. Um, this is stuff for Enderall. This is Enderall Edit, actually. So if you want to play Enderall and use basically the SSC Edit version or XEdit version, this is it. Um, should be on Nexus. Cathedral Assets Optimizer is fine. This is just a tool. I have this over here. I'm going to delete uh, this right here. What else? Boss. This is this was for Oblivion, when I was manually modding Oblivion. No. Chalice Gaming, what's up? <laughs> As I see you popping in. Did I betray the? Oh no, I'm not. I'm not upgrading to S or to AE. I'm down. I'm gonna upgrade and then downgrade. I'm just showing my process as to how I do it. Mod organizer. You hate to do it, but you do it. And did cam load? Yeah. So, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear out my recycling bin. And I'm also going to clear out my downloads folder. This is going to take a while. You can see, like, how many gigs I'm gaining back. Eventually, once I clear out the recycle bin, this number will go up. And this is just on my one. This is on my C, C drive. So, that's not really needed, though. What this is doing is this is getting rid of Mod Organizer plus, you see the mods folder, all the mods I have downloaded. Uh, which also means I could delete the installed. So there may be two of them here. Do I want to permanently delete them? Yeah. Oh, one interrupted action. Fuck. Ah, oh, well, let me close that out. I meant to do that first and I didn't. Uh, Mod Organizer 2, and the task. Did that not download them? Or did that not delete them? I probably shouldn't have interrupted it. I'm trying to do too many things at once. But you get to see me mess up live. You can't do it to your game? Jalice, I'll be honest, I do this like twice a week. <laughs> You can uh, you can ask Strudel and some others in here. I um, I've been known to put like 1,500 mod setups together uh, to play for several hours just to rip everything apart and start fresh. And I've been doing it over the last couple of years. So this is to me this is nothing new. I know to most people setting up a mod list it could take them quite a while. Some people could do it in like so like Lexi's guide and like like Novus I put I, I put up in two days. I did that natural setup. It, it took me two days with about eight to ten hours of modding each day, and I was finished with it, and that was 1,050. Lexi's, uh, the last time I did it was three days, but that's only because of the merges towards the end and her finishing line setup that she has. If you look at her, uh, her guide on her uh, website, it's a little more in-depth. There's, there's, uh, there's a lot more to it. Um, there's a little less uh, on the t 
total mod side, but there's way more content, way more content. And I use the two of those. I'll, I'll usually keep a tab for Lexi's open and a tab for Nolvis open, along with uh, multiple tabs for Nexus, uh, Nexus mods just to bounce back and forth between uh, several of the mods, which I think, yeah, like I have them here. So we already have the downgrade patch. You guys saw this. Uh, always use the full, don't use the best of both worlds. Manually download it, which I've already done. It's right here. I can close this one out. Uh, we're going to need Bethany again. The standalone. Same version that I have. 3.5. We'll manually download that. Mod Organizer 2, we're obviously going to need this again. Manually download this. Um, the script extender. We'll get into this. Let me close one of these just so I don't have too, too many open. And as you can see, it's still deleting everything. I'm back up to 648 gig from 570. You want to see this in person? Oh, uh, Lexi's, yeah. Yeah, her, her, like I said, um, hers used to be on Wabajack, Jealous. Uh, until like, I think like a year and a half ago. Uh, Wabajack had Alexi's uh, install, but uh, and I still don't know the reasons. Um, I'm sure they're on her Discord server, which anybody, you know, anybody can join it's right here. Um, right. Let me close that up. I mean, and and this is always this is always lit up. I actually had to uh, turn notifications to uh, just at mentions for the whole entire server because there are a ton of people here. And same thing with Novus. I had to turn it to at mentions here because, you know, it gets a lot of traffic and my phone starts to blow up. So yeah, this is this is hers. You, can, uh, you should have a link uh, from her website to the Discord. Both of these absolutely join their Discord servers if you plan on doing anything there. Um, we're done. So mod organizer's done. Uh, do I have anything else to delete? Game stuff. Of course we need the game stuff. Right? So we're not going to uninstall it from here just yet. Um, documents. So you go to my documents, my games, special edition folder gets deleted. Uh, go to C, users, and then whatever your unique name is, mine's under my name, uh, app data local and you're going to want to find a few things here uh, you're going to want to find mod organizer you're going to delete that you're going to want to find special edition you're going to want to get rid of that and was there anything else next to speedogen i don't believe so like i said i still have an instance of wabajack somewhere on here that should be it and then the final thing is the special edition folder, which if you see has SKSE, it's got my E and B stuff in it, it's got my engine fixes, it's got the reshade, it's got all the innies, etc. And we're just going to get rid of that too. And you'll see I'll gain I'll gain enough back here. We're up to 745. Cool. Um Steam controller configs, what was this? Don't know. Okay. I'm going to minimize this for a little bit. Before I actually uninstall the game, I want to go into my downloads folder. So right here. Um, and I... I tried adding music but the music didn't want to pipe through. <clears throat> You're still confused as to why I rip out Mod Organizer? Uh, because sometimes there's profiles that get added into Mod Organizer or there's certain things in there that I may not want the next time. And it's it's really just an easy download. Um, I'm out here, I can even get rid of the, the desktop icons. I don't think I have anything else that really needs to be... Yeah, stuff that I'm working on, like my mods... I have a saved mods folder. Um, this is this is stuff that there's a lot of stuff on here that's been taken off Nexus or you know authors for whatever reason hit it to update it and it's been like a year. Some authors have just 
gone away. They've they've just abandoned uh, modding, moved on to other things. Uh, so I have stuff like I have a current. Where is it here? The so the guard armor from Requiem. I have a ported version. I did this myself of the guard's armor from Requiem, for special edition. Uh, I had a copy of Requiem. I can get that again. You get that off Lover's Lab, uh, etc. But anyway, let me go to my downloads folder. So um, we want this. We want Bethany. The full patcher I'm keeping. Uh, mod lists. Let's get rid of these right here. Delete them. And then everything from here all the way down to here can get deleted. These are from Oblivion. I want to keep these. I want to see what else I can get rid of. This is Java. And this is another instance of the full patcher. So this last week I can delete this. Cool. Now, uh, yeah, we still have the game version to do, but let me go to my recycling bin. I want to see exactly what's in here. I will probably get rid of everything in here. Yep. Absolutely everything. So go to recycling bin and empty this bad boy. Do I want to permanently delete them all? I absolutely do. We'll leave this over here, and we'll see how much I gain back. Uh, let me get back to the chat here to see what you guys are talking so my biggest list is 1981. That's a that's a pretty good size list, Jealous. It's a good size list. I do have back. I have my original backup. So if I look in like the SE backups, yeah, you can see we're back to 809, and this is about normal. So now when I go to uninstall Skyrim, yep, games uninstalled. This will change. Uh, Cam takes a while to register everything so this will probably go up to I don't know about 820 gig ish give or take so that recycling bins empty uh, my these are the my original backups this is before anniversary edition came out so I have a backup of the creation kit I had that zipped up plus the exe then you wanted uh, dawn guard dragonborn hearth fires and update ESM Along with the Skyrim ESM, you need the Skyrim EXE, the Launcher EXE, and you needed Interface, Miscellaneous, and Patch.bsa. The rest of the stuff that comes with the game is irrelevant. The textures, the voice, etc. A lot of those things aren't touched. These are the main things you want. I just did the creation kit as a safety net in case something had changed with the CK. Thankfully, it didn't. So I, I technically don't really need to save these, but I'm holding on to them anyway. Uh, recycling bin is done. Uh, did it change? No. We're going to reinstall Skyrim. So we're going to hit next. It's going to do its thing. And at the same time, I am also going to go to properties. We're going to go to updates. So when you reinstall it, it defaults back to always keep this game updated. Uh, this is something probably most of you know. Maybe some of you guys don't know this. Uh, but as soon as you uninstall this game, and whenever you go to reinstall it, it will revert to always keep the game updated, which I don't ever want to do. I only want to update this when I launch it, and this is via Steam, so if I were to launch it via Steam, it would update to the latest version. So, only update when I launch it. I never plan to, uh, because I don't want the Anniversary Edition yet. When Bethesda is 100% done with their updates, uh, I'll update to AE. Hopefully by then, all of the SKSE DLL files and um, mods that require the script extender will have also updated. Uh, I think the latest one that's had an issue is Race Menu. I don't know if they have an AE version of it because I honestly haven't looked yet. So, while that's doing that... Uh, I have two download folders, which I do not need. We could switch this over. So we're going to go to C, Steam Games, Steam Apps. We're going to go to Common. You can see there is a special edition that's already generated. There's not going to be anything in it, and I'm going to pin this to my quick access, so it's right here. And this is how I set things up. I like to keep this nice and organized. So if I open it, you can see there's nothing here, because we're only at 
25%. It's also going slower because I'm streaming. It usually doesn't take this long for me to, uh, to download, but you're limited to the download times that Steam has. So, uh, give me one sec here. All right, apologies about that. It is bitter cold here today, and uh, I also feel like I'm getting a little bit of a cold again, so. I'm not really on Lover's Lab all that often, Jalice. The only thing that I got from there really was Requiem, and that's it. I don't use like any of the sex mods um, in any of my plays. I think the most you guys would ever see from me are like the nude bodies. So like Lexi's default guide, um, f if you do her install, which in order for you to get help on her server requires you to do a default install 100%. Let me pull that up and show you. Um, so installation help under Lexi's LOTD guide. You have to 100% do the guide. You also have to go to load order bot. And you have to put a copy of your load order text document in here, like with the phrase uh, load order. So I would have taken the text document out of uh, Mod Organizer, my profiles, placed it here with this annotation, exclamation point load order, and it would tell you, if you can see here, um, so like, let me see here, try to give you a, a recent example. Okay. Uh, Banky409. I have no idea who this user is. Types in load order with the document. And then you get a download and it says, here's what you need to fix. Or it'll say your plugins match the master list. You need to do that just in order to get help. And then, of course, you can modify it, which is the general modding right here. So you see um, this user here was missing Volca Hard Night Consistency Editions plugin, right? You could download this, and it'll just it'll tell you anything else. If there's multiple things, they'll tell you multiple. And then you could see they did it one more time. Must, they must have gone in and fixed this, grabbed this ESP, and it says your load order has the same plugins as the master list, no problems there. When you see this, you're done. You're absolutely done. Then if you decide you want to alter what they've done, you would go to general modding, and this is where you get help changing from what Le Lexi here, this is her, Dark Lady Lexi, and her dev team have stacked together, and then they'll be able to help you with the modded version. If you don't want to do modded, your questions would be an install help. So, real quick, just leave that there. And we're at almost 70%. Taco, what's up? Welcome in. Sometimes the games get auto-updated. Uh, mine don't. Mine have never gotten auto-updated. Just with this setting. Just with the properties updates. Once I switch this to only launch from Steam, I've never had a uh, game update automatically on me. I don't know. The only other way that it would update is if you check the, lo uh, the local files to verify the integrity. If you do this, it'll auto-update. That's the only other way it'll auto-update. But if you switch your updates to change, it, will, it won't do it. <laughs> yeah, so... And if you're playing on PC, you'd run it through your, like I use Mod Organizer, but if you're using Vortex, you would run it through the script extender directly. There's no reason to play on PC if you're not going to use the script extender. Just play on console at that point. Because then you wouldn't, like, you know, the only other thing you would be using would be ENB, and I don't think ENB, maybe it relies on SKS. Yeah, I don't know. I forget. I'll have to check. <laughs> yeah, there, there'd be no other point. It's one of the, you know, major selling points of even, you know, building or buying a, a gaming PC or a laptop. Hey, Lex, welcome in. Will we get another bot strudel? <laughs> to buy followers? I didn't even see it. <laughs> How you doing, Lex? Yeah, we're almost there. We're at 93% of installing the game. Like I said, I have other things up. Uh, we're going to download... Yeah, we are. We already downloaded the full patcher to downgrade. I have Mod Organizer 2 
and Bethany. These are the main things that I typically delete to uh, start 100% clean, which is ex exactly what we're doing here. So, All right. Uh, Steam has loaded Skyrim. So if you check uh, your special edition folder, you should have a very base. If you go into data, you can see this is the creation club stuff. Let me... Well, if I expand it, it's going to be on the left-hand side. It's really not going to expand anything. You guys can see this. And let me move this down here. So anything that says CC, fishing, fishing master. Uh, rare curios, I believe, is what this is. This is your survival mode. ADV, I have no idea what this is, but I'm assuming uh, Saints and Seducers. These are the free ones they give you just for having Essie, right? Um, Bethesda, I know for a fact Bethesda is planning another update for this sometime soon because there are texture issues which is causing Anniversary well, Edition to crash. I suppose some kind of speech is... Hey, hey, Gemma with the, with the sub. Five month hype. I hope you're well too, Gemma. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. And Lex banhammered it. <laughs> nice. Appreciate it, Lex. Yeah, so this is the Creation Club stuff. So right now I have Anniversary Edition installed. It doesn't say that, it says Special Edition, but that's how you check. Um, what else? Let's see. Details. Property and details on Skyrim EXE. Product version 1.6342. This is Anniversary Edition. This is where you would find it, right? We don't want this. We want Special Edition. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Um, let me go back to data, and I'm going to leave this up. Uh, let me just pull back up the downgrade patcher because... It's nice to have it open. I don't know why it's not pulling it. There it is. It could be because I'm streaming. Okay. So I have it downloaded. Like I said, use the 3 gig full patcher version. Manual download. There's the file size right there. It's a big boy. Um, I do see Halgari has updated yesterday, two days ago. Let's see what that was. Oh, he doesn't have a change log here. But this is essentially it. The only issue you, I could see you running into is one of a couple things. If Bethesda updates and Halgari has not had a chance to update his patcher, then this won't work. Okay? You do have... It's just like SKSE. You would have to wait for like the SKSE dev team to update uh, before you do this. But since there is no uh, Bethesda update, this one should be perfectly fine. The only other issue is sometimes you just need to use the ellipses and point it at your game's EXE before you start patching. Okay? So, um, I need that open, actually. <laughs> uh, it's an executable, so we're going to run it from here. Opening full patcher. Uh, will it show in the background? I, it should. Okay. Couldn't locate Steam, you'll have to launch it manually using the folder button. Okay, so we get an error right away. I'm sure most of you already know what this is. I didn't do something, and I didn't do something on purpose because I wanted to show people getting this error. You have Special Edition installed, but you notice I didn't run it. So let's run it. It's, don't worry about it detecting your video hardware. Don't detect any other options. Uh, let us close the patcher for now and we're just gonna hit play yep that's what you had to do yep and it is in now you'll see with the anniversary edition you're gonna get this X available now anniversary upgrade so if you want to purchase anything um, the rest of the content from there um, you can absolutely do that and then th there's your creation club of message this has been on here since special edition had cc but you're essentially done um we don't need to do anything this just generates the base game any files so we can quit out here 
cool. So you'll notice nothing in here has changed. That's perfectly fine. Um, I can minimize my... Let's run the full patcher again. Okay, now it's telling me it just can't locate it and I have to manually do it. That's exactly what we want. So um, I can't expand this. All it is is the folder icon. You're going to go to your special edition EXE right there. You're going to open it and you're going to hit start patching. It's going to let it do its thing. It could take anywhere from a couple seconds to a couple minutes. Oh god, no, Padinsky. <laughs> I see. Yeah, that. Yeah, the laughing icon is. Yeah, absolutely there. I'm. I'm not. Pl let me. Let me say this back. I've been pretty vocal about being, or what it may seem to be, anti-anniversary edition for a few reasons. I'm not a big fan of a lot of the Creation Club content. I think a lot of mods that are on Nexus or elsewhere do things better if they're kind of the same thing. Take survival mode. Right now, I know it's been updated a couple times to what it is now. I still think Frostfall and especially Sunhelm do it better. Uh, it's nice to have everything in a nice, neat package. That's a master file that you basically don't have to touch or worry about, aside from the patches that Garthand does for uh, the Creation Club. I believe uh, he's somebody like Arthmore that does all the. Uh, unofficial creation club patches uh they're really well done i'm uh I, i'm not necessarily anti-ae i'm anti-ae because the way i see things is that Be bethesda should have put this as its own separate game like when special edition came out they left legendary edition alone my thoughts on this are the same thing when anniversary edition was announced i was really hoping that it would have been its own separate executable and then of course i think it was like a week and a half or two weeks later we find out that no it is in fact going to be a patch or update for special edition which led everybody into a frenzied panic as to what the hell to do and then you started seeing videos from say uh dirty weasel media i think he was one of the first ones that came out with how to back up all your stuff properly for anniversary edition not just a normal backup and a few others uh, did a few, and I know he's done several other updates since then on his YouTube channel. Are we done yet? Let's see. Finish patching. Enjoy your game. This is what you will see. He leaves a nice little message, and it works. Uh, it works the opposite way. It works bottom to top. So it looks for your game here. It does all the fancy coding or programming. I don't know what Halgari's like a master of what he does. <laughs> I'm not even going to attempt to figure it out. I'm just going to use the tool because it's a handy tool. And then once you get to the top, it's going to give you this message here. Unless you get an error. If you get an error, it's going to stop, right? And you're going to have to rerun it again. You're going to have to fix whatever the error is and run it. But like I said, I've done this. This is the second time running the patcher. The first time was when I redid my list, uh, was it three, four days ago-ish? Something like that. Commissar, welcome in. It's midnight. I'm finally done with work. The coffee is cold but potent. Oh boy. The stream is on. I'm going to watch and silently despair at my life choices. I do that on a daily basis, Commissar. May I offer burgers in these trying times? Burgers are welcome. <laughs> I'm going to upload this VOD to my YouTube. Yeah, Mace, I'll, I'll put this one up on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, what else? Who do we have here? We rise out of the filth of AE and ascend to the purity that is... Yeah, Special Edition's the most stable anyway. People try to tell me otherwise, and I've heard the back and forth that LE is more stable. I call bullshit on that. Vanilla for Vanilla, Special Edition is by far the most stable Skyrim game you have, including Anniversary Edition, which is still not stable. In its vanilla form, SE is. If you play a vanilla SE game, unmodded, properly installed, you shouldn't crash. At all. 
unless your rig physically can't handle it. There's there's no reason why you should have any glitches. Now, without the unofficial patch, there's going to be the uh, base vanilla bugs that you see, for example, like uh, the wolves not howling properly, among other things. But you shouldn't have any crash issues. Ellie, I can't say the same. Vanilla for vanilla, I had bugs and glitches and stuttering with plain old Ellie on this rig. Uh, so nobody's going to try and tell me otherwise. <laughs> All right. So this is done. Uh, you can close this out. And if you go back in and check, here is, there it is. And you can see everything in the data folder. Now there's no, uh, there is no creation club anything. And uh, go back to the here. The Skyrim EXE, you're going to right click, go to your properties. If you want to double check it, go to your details tab here. And we are now back on 1597.0, but you don't need the dot zero. 1597, you're on special edition. The file version, people were getting confused with this, right? So what people were doing is they were coming here of highlighting this, and they're looking at, I don't know if you guys can see that there, it says, File version 1? What the hell? I thought it was supposed to be 1597. No. No. Go to Properties. Go to your Details. This is another place where you can find your game version. So just want to point that out there. For those that didn't know where to locate it, that's a, that's a pretty easy way to, to get to it. You know? Now you simply launch the game via Steam so it can update again. Oh, fuck, fuck, Padinsky, don't be saying that. No, we leave Steam alone. Leave it alone. Go to the Store tab. Minimize it. <laughs> Get it out of the way so you don't accidentally update it. All right, so we're good. Um, we now have a clean special edition. There is nothing here. Everything here, everything that would be in my backups folder... These all right here are identical, okay? So it's cool. What I like to do now is um, we're going to keep the Special Edition tab pinned up at the top. I keep my modding tools, which is what we're going to do next, uh, because we have to get those, and they have to be in the right place. So what I deleted, and what I always delete is uh, I always delete my Bethany. I always delete my Dindulad, right? So you can see there's nothing in here. There's nothing in Bethany. There is nothing in Mod Organizer because I am super OCD about this. Um, I also find that this is the most clean way. The reason being is that Mod Organizer, and I'll show you guys when I install it, because I'm about to do that now. Uh, there are other plugins or edit scripts for like Xedit. Now Xedit, I don't have anything besides all geared up, which is why I didn't delete Xedit itself. Normally I would have. If I had a full Lexi install, um, then what you would have seen me delete uh, would have included uh, Cathedral Assets Optimizer. As you can see, there's pro the Profiles folder here, and this is just base SSE, right? Now, in here, you'd see Profiles, and if you open the Profiles, it would be FO4 Special Edition, TES5 is LE, and then there would have been uh, several Lexi custom profiles for her setup. So, if I go to her page here, and you go to Guide, and you go to, I want to say Prerequisites, General Utilities, and she goes into detail. If you guys decide that you want to look at this, like I said, I usually keep this up as sort of a base reference for certain things. Keep the most current version of 7-Zip. It rarely updates, but you need it. Microsoft Visual, you could see now with the newest version, it's uh, up to uh, 2022. These are the files you would need. Um, you would right click on link to open. Uh, if you click on this, it'll just pull up another version of this. And then you could see it's what they have. There's always a link. So it's super handy. You may not see. And the version numbers, right? And it tells you what it is. Official Bethesda content. Well, you obviously need the game. It tells you how to turn off the Steam overlay. I think mine's already off. Because I think once you turn that off... Yeah, enable Steam overlay while in game. This is... I always have it off. Let's not... Let's not screw things up. Let's keep... Let's keep Steam hidden. <laughs> Minimized.
Go to the store and grab a single malt to forget about Steam. <laughs> yeah. 100% Lex. 100%. <clears throat> you could put Steam in offline mode. Yeah, you could. I I've never I've never had issues with it being not in offline mode and having it update. And this is since I've had SE on my PC. So special edition came out 2016, 11, 11, 2016, right? Um, so for two years, I didn't have my PC built. I was still, I was modding on console. That's where I started. I started my modding Skyrim experience in 2016, late, late 2016, early 2017 on my Xbox One S. I didn't start on PC. So I had a little bit different experience than a lot of you guys who have been modding Ellie for years. Um, you guys have years on me. Um, I have a shit ton of experience with console modding to where I didn't have for I want to say for the first couple months there were some issues but after that I could set up uh, my Xbox with the full 150 mod list and get up to the 4.96 gigabyte file that um, Xbox allows you for and play a 300 hour game without a single crash stutter or issue granted uh, Back then, Xbox limited you to a 30 FPS cap, which you really couldn't tell, and nobody could really tell, but we found that out later. So, anyway, um, and she goes into stuff with like updating proof and configuring, and this is, you know, for her guide. I'm gonna do this a little bit, but now you see, they've added the uh, the downgrade patcher, if I can even, right there. She goes into detail how to do it, you know. The stuff that you saw me do, it, it, it explains it in detail, but I think a lot of people are visual learners. I'm one of them. Watching somebody else do something once, and I pretty much have it. If I need to do it again, I'll go back. If they have it on YouTube, I'll watch the video a second time. After the second time, I pretty much have it. I'm one of those people. Some people need to read to understand. You also notice she puts links. So for like the creation kit, we also need the creation kit. There's a video from Dark Fox. She's got videos linked here. And like I said, even if you guys aren't using her guide, if you're using something else, but you want information like a video for installation of something. This is also a really, really nice reference to tools, to installation, uh, to optimization, things like Bethany, etc. There's loot. Oh, we have to install loot. We have to install Mod Organizer first. We haven't done that. Let me minimize, or let me close this down. All right, let me get out of here. Let me show you what else, what else I would have gotten rid of. Uh, so file room tools, this is the resaver. This is what you use to check your save files. Uh, if you think you have, uh, or if it says, like, you know, the game has been corrupted, you can run this on your last save or any save you want that you think, you know, and it'll tell you. As soon as you run this, um, it'll tell you, if there's something up with that save, unattached instances, uh, rogue scripts, things like that. But normally, all I do with this is I keep this here, and if this ever updates, I'll update it. As you can see, this is 2018. I don't think it's updated since then. I don't think I've needed to update it. Um, and surely, yeah, you're one who keeps it in offline mode. Yeah, that's and surely you're perfectly fine doing that. I don't, I don't really care about the online stuff either. Uh, I've just never had the need to put it in offline mode. <laughs> it's because of the strudel he puts up with you. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Uh, other things I would have... Uh, so this is my mod watch. Mod, all right. Here's a, we'll go off on a slight tangent here. I'm probably doing something wrong, but I am not able to delete my current mod watch. When I go there, um, I'll have to do that later. I don't want to get into that with this. Nipscope is fine. I only use this once in a while. I'm not very good at it. The NPC plugin chooser, this is from Lexi's, right? So if her current version updates uh, or the NPC plugin chooser updates, it's the pre AE. This is actually on Nexus. You would grab this and just throw this folder in. Uh, sometimes I would do it, other times not. Ignore what that is. Um, the thing you would want is the uh, settings uh, JSON file, and 
to get to the NPC plugin chooser, it's really your game data path. You used to have to fill this out in between um, the quotes, but you need to change all of these from single slash uh, backslashes to double backslashes or forward slashes. I'm not really sure what they, what they are. It's double slashes, we'll just say that. You also need your, excuse me, mod organizer data path, just take you to your mods, and also the NPC appearance output, which is a self-created mod. I'm not going to get into detail with that. I just wanted to show you that this would also be something I would delete. Uh, reshade. I keep reshade in here. I'm not going to be using reshade now. Um, it's at version 491. Perfectly fine. If reshade updates, update it. Uh, NIF optimizer is fine. SSE edit. I would normally delete this and re-download it. I don't need to because, like I said, the only thing I have in here for edit scripts are the all geared up, uh, the model, uh, texture model explosion. Uh, item position generator comes with the manual download, the same with the skeleton patcher, same with the mesh generator. Now I do have the fixed uh, mesh, which is literally this same uh, script. So it will overwrite this. So that's all you need. If you add anything else, if you have a ton of other stuff, you can see it's got stuff for Fallout 4, Fallout New Vegas, Fallout 3, etc., uh, etc. Et Oblivion. Ton of scripts. Ton of scripts in SSE. A ton of base scripts. That would be a tool I would also get rid of. SSE Log Gen. Don't have anything in there. The Terrain Tamriel, this is for when I'm uh, generating uh, my 3D LODs and my Terrain LOD. <laughs> it's a master. It's specific to Lexi's guide, but you can use it if you want to, if you know what you're doing. Uh, synthesis is another thing. Um, I am going to delete synthesis. Don't need it. Will it be in here? Yes, it will be. Let's get rid of it. And it will. Sometimes my recycling bin does it. Okay, it's empty. And uh, this is a personal mod. This is on my Nexus. This is the Synthesis Maximus fix if you want to play with Percus Maximus and use the Synthesis Patcher instead of Java. Java takes like a half hour plus. This one takes me 13 seconds to patch a full load order. Uh, so you don't need to update ModWatch through MO2. I love modding it. streams. <laughs> Welcome, Wind. Also, Z Edit. Wind, you're up early today. <laughs> I kid. Welcome in. Yeah, I was hoping she would join. I hadn't talked to her yet. Um, profiles. Do I have anything in here? We could always get these later. I don't really think there's anything in C-Edit. I deleted this before, so we're fine. Okay, cool. Back to some less boring stuff. What do we need? Well, we got rid of the full patcher. I'm going to get rid of all this stuff. Uh, Bethany Standalone. This is the way I do it. I try to keep these things semi-organized. And I use my desktop for a lot of stuff. I know a lot of you guys don't do that. Um, I'm a big... Uh, advocate of working off your desktop. For me personally, it makes it easier, but if you have another way of doing things, like you know where your file paths are, absolutely just do it the way you want to do it. I'm just showing you how I do mine. Okay, so Bethany, Bethany, since it's a zip, I could just pop it in here. Did it go? It's making a liar out of me. It could be because I'm streaming and it doesn't like something I did. Or I could download it again. All right. It's making a liar out of me. Well, screw it. We don't need the any files anyway. Let's see if MO2 decides it wants to to run. <clears throat> Removed. Oh, I may have to re-download these. Okay, cool. So let's get rid of them. Uh... MO2. Files. Manual. Let's do them one by one. I think what I did is I rushed into it. All right. <clears throat> Opening mod organizer. There it goes. Yep. Give it permissions. 
uh, accept the agreement, of course, and I change mine. So whatever your default path is, just make sure that this is accurate. I actually have to browse because I there's a modding folder here for other stuff. Then I have my mod tools folder. I know I can't really expand this. Um, here's mod organizer right there. That's where I want it to go. So C, for me, it's C mod tools mod organizer. Yes. Make sure that these are all ticked. If any of these aren't ticked, uh, can you right click and all? No, just do them one, one by one. Uh, because this is everything that comes with the current MO2 version 242. Okay, that's the current version of MO2. Uh, we'll create program shortcut in the following. I don't want it on the start menu, but I do want a desktop icon. So don't create. I'm not going to tick this. Well, you don't need that. So create a desktop shortcut. Yes, we want that. Otherwise, I'll show you another way to do it. It's pretty easy. And install. Yeah, keep everything out of program files. So for me, guys, uh, I have C, Steam Games, right? I moved my Steam to here. So instead of C, uh, program files, because it'll default to x86. And then it would be Steam Games, Steam Apps Common. Don't, don't put Skyrim in either of these. It's real simple. New folder. Name it Steam, Steam Games, whatever you like. This is going to say new folder. I don't want a new folder. Yeah x86 just you're asking for trouble asking for trouble with it uh click uh we want to launch and you can see the uh, icon over here has changed i like to keep mine up top here next to 7 zip and steam i am going to rename it mo2 sse continue there it is launch it it's going to be all vanilla e Create a portable instance. Don't use the global instance. Trust me. Save yourself some half hassle. Create portable. Uh, special edition. Yep. We want that. It's going to be C mod tools mod organizer. If that's not right, there's your ellipses and find it. Mine is right. Go and finish. Do you want a tutorial? I'm going to say no because this tutorial takes a while and you guys can do this on your own if you want to see it, if you reinstall it. I'm not going to. It's not that video. Do you want to associate it with Nexus links? Yes, I do. So you can also do that by coming here and going to Nexus. And if you weren't connected, connect to Nexus. That's where it's at. The wrench and spanner. Uh, wrench and flathead, as we say here in the, uh, the US. I still say spanner just because it sounds cooler. And uh, you guys on the metric system and all that stuff, you're... Uh, it just sounds more nuanced. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> so that's it. Um, it's installed, but you'll notice we're on the default profile. The DLC stuff is out of order. All you're doing is you're going to move Dawnguard up. You want it to match up with this. The plugin say Skyrim Update Dawnguard, not Skyrim Update Hearthfires. Make sure these are identical. There's some of the few that you need to keep identical to each other. It's a little thing. Some people don't and don't have any issues. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't trust it. You know, Le Spinner. <laughs> when I heard the hear the word spanner, I don't think of a wrench. Oh boy. I would agree with that wind. I would 100% agree with that. Uh, so what else do we need? We're not going to run anything. Uh, definitely don't launch this. This is the same as launching it from Steam. So let's uh, let's minimize it. What do we need? The creation kit. All right. Let's open up uh, my Skyrim folder. So the creation kit will eventually be populated in here, along with a few other things. Now you may think, well, why not just get SKSE right away? Well, you need the base stuff first. So I'm going to minimize my uh, game folder. You can do one of two things. Uh, if you have the creation kit like I do, you don't need to delete it. You can launch this, which will auto-launch your Bethesda Net Launcher. But I'm going to do it the opposite. I'm going to do it the way that I feel like you should really do it. Launch your Bethesda Net Launcher first. Okay. I'll show you why. You're going to be able to launch the creation kit from here directly. Um, mine is set to show the CK when this loads 
uh, thank Bethesda for their lovely... It, it doesn't matter if I'm streaming this or not, it just takes a little bit. So right there's the creation kit. Awesome. Uh, you would find it in here and, and then under tools, I believe. Mine stays up because I do not use uh, the Bethesda Net Launcher for anything else. So if I go to launch this, I'm going to get an error. Right? Oh no, creation kit system failed to launch due to unknown error. Well, just scan and repair it. It's going to pop this down. It's going to overwrite. Install complete, ready to play. Okay, cool. You could do one of two things. Now you can launch the CK from here. Or what I like to do is I like to hit play because I want it to first generate from uh, Bethesda Net. So we're going to hit play. It's going to do its thing. I'm going to minimize this. Now you're going to get this. Your script source extraction. Hit yes to this. If you do any work in the creation kit, you absolutely need this. Don't know why you would hit no. Don't even know why no is an option. Don't know why this pops up. Why it just doesn't auto unpack the scripts.zip. But you need it. And this does take a little bit. So in the meantime, we're going to put this up in this corner. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Lexi's page because she... No, you know what? I have a copy of the custom mini. Hold on. I, I do. I have it saved. It's on her page. And I will show you where to get it. Where do I have it saved? Save mods. Creation kit custom. Okay. I'm going to put this here. But I will show you where to find it on her page. It's pretty easy. Let's open this up. While well, scripts.zip is going to take its time. Uh, go to the search on the main page. Type in creation kit. Right? It'll take you right to the creation kit link. But if you scroll down here, it'll say download the pre-made creation kit custom any. If you just hit left mouse, it'll give you the same file. And this goes in your game folder. It allows you to load multiple masters. Uh, we do need CK fixes, though. So type in creation fix. It'll be the first one by Nukem is the one you want. There is a multiple masters uh, by Stark Chaser. I've always used the one by Nukem. Okay. Just watching this here. Uh, it's a manual download. Don't worry about the requirements. You could, But I do recommend you always check requirements for everything. This is going to be a manual download, and you want just the first main file, 3.2. Manually download this. This is really easy. Okay. And like I said, here's the custom mini. Here is the CK fixes. I work off my desktop. I don't need this any longer. We'll do the same thing with this. Uh, game folder. So while the CK is loading... 7-zip and extract the custom any to creation kit custom. It's going to populate a little folder. It's going to be just literally one thing. It's, gonna, it's taken a while because this is running. And you could do the same thing with the CK fixes. I may have to wait until this is done for it to pop up, but a folder is going to eventually pop up. Actually, we're going to do that. We're going to wait until the scripts.zip populates just because I don't want to start rushing ahead and getting ahead of myself. So how's everybody doing? <laughs> I'm 12 this morning. When I'm, I always feel like like that. Somewhere between 12 and uh, 17. Did you eat the muffin I gave you in your lunch? What's going to happen too is um, once scripts.zip finishes, the CK will auto load because we ran it from the Bethesda. You can see the Bethesda Net launcher is still up here. This is running, and it says running right in the little green box there. This uh, also takes a little less time when you're not streaming it, just so you guys are aware. My hardware is pretty good, I think, uh, but it is one rig, so. Oh, there it is, but I'm, I'm going to leave it here. I, I'm not going to do anything with it. I want to do this step by step. I don't want to start confusing people, and I feel like I already have. So if you're confused about something, feel free to ask. We're going to minimize uh, the Bethesda... And you're going to just stare at my lovely desktop with a whole bunch of cluttered tools and things that I use and a nice screenshot I wound up taking of uh, the planes and Whiterun. I change this up once in a while if I find another screenshot I take that I like, but not, not very often. 
So after an hour, he asks how we're doing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of an asshole like that, Beowulf. <laughs> Sometimes. No, I think I asked in the beginning, but I don't think you were here yet. But I do hope everybody is doing well. I'm actually surprised. It's saying there's 22 people actually watching this. I wasn't expecting that. So uh, you guys get a cookie. And if you have peanut allergies, uh, apologies, because they are peanut cookies. Okay. Hey, look, we got the creation kit. You don't need to do anything else. It's the CK has launched. You know, it's got your base Skyrim folders. If you want to check, it's the little folder icon to load up when you're doing stuff, but just cancel this out. So the CK is done. Uh, you can close that. You can also close your Bethesda net launcher. No longer needed. If you open up... MO2, since we didn't close it, you'll notice there's nothing here. Okay. Well, let's close MO2 and just reopen it. Actually, let's first do this. You could do a refresh one of two ways. This small wrench and spanner for options has a refresh option, or what I've gotten used to doing myself is just I click in the top up here because it doesn't affect anything, and I hit F5. That also does a refresh. You'll notice the CK still didn't populate. Okay. Close down MO2. Reopen MO2. There is the creation kit. Okay. Now we're getting into things how I like to set up my mod organizer step by step. You already saw me switch Dawn Guard. The creation kit is here. You can also go into the gears icon. You can move these around. If I want this to be up on top, above the launcher, and if I hit apply, it'll put it on top. You can do it uh, this way via edit. It's the same thing, right? Apply and OK. And you'll notice it's back to the bottom. Cool. My lips are swollen, like Botox gone very wrong. That's, uh, I have no uh, experience with Botox lips when I can't, I can't say that I feel your pain. But you're dizzy. Drink some water and sit down or lay down. Speaking of peanut allergies, I think one of the sauces I used for dinner last night may... Oh, boy. That's not good. And that would be why. Okay. I feel bad now. <laughs> uh, so I just... I like to put all of my things that I normally use, like the CK, SSE Edit, Z Edit, um, Body Slide, Finis or Nemesis, etc., um, I'll highlight them here, and I'll go under shortcuts, and you're going to select the toolbars and menu. It's going to pop it up here. So if, if say, this was on, I don't know, the Explorer virtual folder, but I can I don't have to scroll through this bar. And when you have multiple tools here, uh, you'll actually have a nice slider to get to them. The ones I use most often, I pop up here. So if I just hit the CK icon, the creation kit loads. There it is. Okay. Now... We're going to minimize this. We're going to get a couple extra things. You see I got the fixes. Same thing with uh, that I did with the custom mini. And there's the custom mini folder. We're going to do with the CK fixes. We're going to extract it to the fixes release. Not to here. You just want to hear so there's a folder. right? Open the game folder. Or expand it. right? Open your custom mini. Right? This is what's going to allow you to load the multiple masters. Just drag and drop it in. Cool. You've now installed your custom mini. Goes in the game folder, not your data folder. We're not using Nexus Mod Manager. I don't recommend anybody using Nexus Mod Manager. If you have Nexus Mod Manager on your PC, uninstall that shit and kick it to the curb. Vortex or Mod Organizer. <laughs> Only two. And I don't even use Vortex, but I do have it downloaded. Data needs to stay nice and clean. You don't want anything in here aside from if you are actually working in the creation kit and you need a plug-in or meshes and textures or scripts or whatever else. That's the only time. Keep this clean. Virtual systems are your friend. Same thing with the CK fixes. Uh, you'll see TBB, you'll see TBB Malloc, Skyrim 64, the test any. You guys are probably familiar with some of these from the engine fixes mod. Just drag and drop all four into your game. You are now done with these two. Get them the F out of here. Awesome. Minimize this. What else do we need? Oh, Bethany. 
Yeah, Bethany didn't like me, right? She's not my friend today. Let's try it again. It's probably because there is too much shit going on. Uh, although, do I have it in the downloads? I do not. Okay. So we need to get it. Manual download. Um, let's go to my mod tools folder. Go to Bethany. I should be able to drag this in here. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to do. Shepard, what up? Yeah, we are starting absolutely perfectly clean. Absolutely clean. I, uh, I, you just, well, you didn't see me, uh, but you can ask. I just wiped a 1050 mod setup completely. I uninstalled Skyrim Special Edition. I uninstalled Mod Organizer. I deleted Mod Organizer. I deleted uh, Bethany. I deleted Dindulad. I got rid of all of my downloads. I have absolutely no downloads, no mods archived, uh, which I personally do. Um, I know Pedinsky keeps his in a separate location so he doesn't have to re-download them. He also doesn't wipe clean twice a week like I do. <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of other people keep your downloads separate. Um, I actually do recommend keeping your downloads. Um, it saves from having you to re-download. This is just a, this is just my way of completely getting rid of anything. If you have any nagging issues that you just can't figure out, and you're at the point like I get frequently where you want to just wipe everything clean, this is this is exactly what this is for. So yeah, what we did then is we reinstalled Special Edition, which wound up leading us to install Anniversary Edition. Then I ran the downgrade patcher to turn it back to Special Edition, which so that's what we have. Steam is making me nervous. So let's get that down. Uh, Bethany. So you can extract it here. This is how I do it. And then you don't need that anymore. You can see Bethany's here. Uh, there's the EXE. What I like to do here is I like to create another shortcut, throw the shortcut on my desktop, go back to Mod Tools, and we'll just rename this uh, SSE. Okay? Same thing, just a shortcut to it. And I put it up next to Mod Organizer. Uh, what else do we need? Let's see. What other tools? Dindulad. We may as well get this at this point, right? May as well get it. So you have a choice with this, okay? Um, there is the, if you go to the page, uh, Shushin's page here, this is the SE resources, right? You have to be careful with this. This is Dindulad version 298. This is not the miscellaneous uh, three uh, version 3 alpha. Okay. You want to make sure that if you're going to run the base 298, you're going to want resources SE. If you're going to run Dindulad 3 alpha, you're going to need resources 3, which is this. Okay, it's on a separate page. This is for the alpha version. But you'll see he's got a, a, a Nexus link to that. It's for the alpha version only. This is what confuses a lot of people with uh, Dindulad. They get the wrong version. They think, all right, well, I have SE, or here's Dindulad and resources. You could you can manually download these two, or you can manually download Dindulad. And if you use 298 version, you're going to use 2.88 version of SE. If you're going to run the alpha version, which I am. Uh, so I'm going to manually download this. Actually, let me get rid of Bethany so I have it nice and clean. Okay. I can't run resources SE. I need resources 3 SE, which I'm not going to download yet because I don't want it in my, uh, I don't want it in mod organizer. So, uh, didn't do a lot. It's in a 7-zip folder, and it is 3, extracted here, does its thing. You can keep the archive if you want it. I get rid of them. You'll see Dindulad. So with this, uh, because it's a tool, 
um, you'll see if you go into the edit scripts, there shouldn't really be anything else, but it's a little bit different. Your Dindulud any SSE any is going to look different than the original. Okay, so if you want to check it with, uh, I recommend Notepad plus plus because it is nice. Um, set wizard set to one and start zero to start in advanced mode. So what I would do when I do my advanced LODs is the wizard gets set to zero and I leave it alone and I just save it. I'm not going to do anything here. We're going to, we're going to clean all this out. We're going to leave it alone. Just know that it's installed. Okay. Mod organizer is fine. The reason I delete mod organizer is sometimes I have uh, a lot of profiles. You can see right now we're on default. There's other things that can go in there. Uh, plugins for Mod Organizer. You'll see uh, there's files on Nexus. Uh, if you go to Lexi's page, she's got things that go into Mod Organizer's plugin uh, and in here as well, which is why I like to start clean. So, um, okay, so Dindulad, we got that installed. Bethany's fine. Let's go back to MO2. There are a few programs. This is the point where I like to add my executables in. Right now, we just have the creation kit. Um, let us do SKSE first. Now, I'll try to keep this about as organized as I can. Okay. Since we are on SE, we want the current SE build 2.020 or 2.020, right? Now you can use 2019. Uh, it's under archived builds. Uh, if you click on this, it brings up all of the archived current or recent, which would be, where is it? Did they delete it? Or am I just missing it? I might be missing it. Maybe they got rid of it because of AE. I don't know. I'm probably just missing it. 208. Now here it is. I'm sorry. It used to be the bottom one here. Uh, so here is 20019. Okay. If you want to use this, you can. Perfectly safe on the last version of Special Edition. Game version 1597. Uh, but I think everything has been updated to run on uh, 20. So that's the version we're going to get. I can get the script extender off here. We're going to minimize this. We're going to throw SKSE on the desktop. We're going to minimize this. We're going to pull up my game folder. Beautiful. 7-zip, extract to SKSE for a couple of reasons. Open up the SKSE folder. Cool. You only need three files. 1597 DLL, the loader EXE, and the Steam loader. A couple ways you can do this. You can copy and paste, right? You could highlight all three by holding control, drag. You'll see it says three right there and throw it in. That's the way I do it, right? You don't need this right now, um, but you do need, you do need this, right? So SKSE is installed in your game folder. You're fine. We have to install it to Mod Organizer. Now, one of two things is going to happen. If I hit refresh, Nothing. You may see if I close it and reopen it, what do we have? SKSE. It auto puts it there for you, right? Not bad. Which is why some people come up with two instances of SKSE. Because they initially don't see this here, you're, and they don't know that you have to close down uh, Mod Organizer and just reopen it, and you'll already get a version of SKSE. If I want to check this, right uh what is the binary steam steam apps common skse loader so here it is the loader exe right that's all you need that's it you don't need to do anything else i'm actually going to put this above the creation kit because i keep my things in a specific order and we're also going to throw skse onto the toolbar and menu awesome uh what don't we have loot we don't have loot we do need loot um, I am going to close down Mod Organizer while we get loot. 
Oh, does it not want to take me to loot? What the fuck? Am I not on? I am. What the fuck? Let's get rid of SKSC. If this, does this do this for you guys too? There it is. Apparently you can't, you could type in Lou, but not loot. <laughs> so I'm only on Xbox, but I end up deleting everything at least once a week. Yeah, Shepard. I did the same thing too. Um, the hard resetting is the worst part about playing on the console. It's just the waiting. It's it's not the process. Because once you have the process down of how to go about doing stuff on console, it's really, really easy. It's just the, the hard resetting and the waiting time is a pain in the freaking ass. You know? Even when you even when you update, right? If, there, if like, say a texture, a texture mod that you like to run gets an update, um, which is perfectly safe to do, on console, you still have to hard reset your console when you after you install it. It is just like it doesn't just update and hey, we can go play now with the updated texture. It's no, you gotta you gotta reset. You gotta hold the power button. Pain in the ass. Uh, it's where you can't see part of my screen, huh? Uh, hold on, let me check. Let me see. I'm going to minimize it here. Oh, I see what it's doing. I don't know why it's doing that. Let me... How bad is the screen? Has it been this way the whole time? It's partially off screen. Alright, let me uh, see if I can fix... I don't know if this is going to do it. Lining this up is such a pain in the freaking ass. And I'm really not good at this. You're going to see the screen... Uh, Minimize and maximize a few times. Or not, or it's not going to do it. Alright, I'm going to go back here. Shift and select. Are you talking about on OBS, Lex? Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. That should make it a little bit better. All right. So we need loot. No requirements for loot. Should be a manual download, and it's an installer. Uh, wow, this got updated today. 28th of December. Uh, anything in the change logs? New version. 17. Zero, or zero dot one seven dot zero. Support for blah, 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 blah. As support for Enderall. Okay. Well, new version. Let's see. Manual download. Cool. Yeah, it looks like it's better too. I can see it there. Yeah, because I, I have it. Um, I don't have it expanded to the whole screen, so. What you guys are seeing is what I'm seeing now. It seems like it worked. Uh, so the loot installer. So let's just pull up our mod tools with loot. I want to. I'm going to take a look on my phone to see if this is off screen too. Because maybe I screwed it up and I don't have it right. Yeah, it is. Okay. So Lex, what'd you say to do? Um, hold shift and. Oh, I s there you go. Oh, you're the man. That's awesome. I didn't even know that. I I've been sitting here fiddling with this for 
Well, longer than I'd like to admit. And I messed it up again. Okay, no, it expanded. Cool. All right. Let's just see if that fixed thing. I'm going to check my phone here real quick. So now my uh, mod tools folder shouldn't be off the... There it is. That's weird. But you guys are able to see the entire desktop. I don't know why it's still cutting off. Might have to refresh. Uh, it could be. Yeah, see if I, I moved it over. Yeah, I probably would have to refresh the whole stream, wouldn't I? That's a pain in the ass. Any easy way to do that aside from starting over? <laughs> Let's see. It's also stream should be at 1080. We can't see your start menu. Not that I know of. So is that is that the fix? Like, do I have to like shut down OB like shut down OBS, like end stream, restart stream? Is that the only thing that's gonna fix this or what? Because I'll do it. It's not a problem. I have I have time today, you know. Streaming at 6:48, yeah. I thought I changed that, but. Well, you guys, let me know. I mean, like, if it's if it's if it's stuff that's off the screen, I'm obviously gonna have to fix it. Um, you could see this folder here, but it's it's off. This is my mod tools folder. So Win says, keep going. And my coffee's cold as well, so it's not a good sign. Yeah, every time I load up like a new thing in OBS, my screen gets foobarred for some reason. I don't know why. I could see it like the first time I load up a, a, a new game. Like if I'm starting a new series of whatever, like gameplay, I always adjust it the first time. And then it's fine that it, it always does it. Your stream out should, output should be the same as your screen size. Then the stream can be, but you can do that later. Okay, so if you guys think I'm fine like this, I'll just make sure to keep this towards the left side, because that's all that it is. Okay. Uh, let's see here. So loot. Uh, loot's an, uh, an executable installer too, but we wanted to go into the loot folder, which is where we're going to direct it. So uh, just run the exe. Uh, if it's got any user controls or whatever, you can add it to like a whitelist or I just run it in admin mode because you have to run it once and you have to run it once out of MO2 for it to generate the master list. If you do not do this, it won't uh, uh, sort your plugins properly. It's a step that gets overlooked. Uh, language English. Okay. Destination C mod tools. See, mod tools loot, and it's going to create another loot folder inside here. We're going to select yes. Do I want a desktop shortcut? I do not. I don't plan on running it from a desktop. I don't need a shortcut. I do. I am going to run it once from this folder. It's going to extract. There's the folder. Inside of the loot folder is all of the rest of the shit that it gives you. Completed. Do I want to launch it from here? I do not. Let's untick this, hit finish. We're going to do it manually, right? So... Uh, minimize that and just run the loot executable it's probably going to prompt you first time yeah if it doesn't automatically show you special edition you can select it it may have a different window for you just make sure SC is selected all right let me uh, go over here minimize a little bit of this minimize the loot folder too so uh, it appears you have the script extender but is required scripts seem missing that's fine we didn't install that yet we're gonna do that uh, you've not sorted your plugins 
Well, that's exactly what we're going to do. And you can see all the uh, unclean masters. Don't worry about them yet. We're going to get into that. Just sort it. It may say apply, but it may go back. Once you have five warnings, four dirty plugins, you're fine. Because you never clean that. Don't worry about the script extender. We're installing that now. So we've run it. Another nice thing about uh, loot. Let me reopen up Mod Organizer again. Okay. There it is. Uh, under the creation kit, I am going to throw it on the toolbars. So let's run it from MO2. You could sort that on Discord some state. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, you know what I'll do? I'll do it uh, either off or maybe I'll do like a private. Uh, well, no, I couldn't do it in Discord because it's set to Twitch. Okay. Anyway, uh, we're really not going to worry about the warnings, although we're going to do this again. Uh, it's going to give you the base, the script extender, yada yada. Over here on the right side, even if you've uh, uninstalled and reinstalled loot like I did, it's going to remember a few things. If you've uh, changed your group editor settings, which I know is going to be hard to see, but I can't expand this. What I can do is I can come in. This acts as sort of a load order. You can see it starts on the left hand side with DLC content, then it moves to creation club content, fixes and resources. You can move these things, you can add things to this. Lexi's guide has a very very specifically detailed uh, things to add in uh, up here where it says group name, like if I wanted to add say Magus 80's new group and then I hit the plus icon if I come back over here, there's Magus 80's new group. And maybe I need this to run directly after the DLC, so... Well, maybe not. DLC is itself. Maybe Creation Club. Oh, I have to apply it, right? I'm an idiot. Group editor. Oh, maybe that's why. You're supposed to be able to draw a line. Anyway. We're going to cancel this out. few reasons for that. Any uh, user metadata. Now, I have some for my last setup. You want to clear everything. This includes uh, your loot rules that you may make. So, like I said, I was following the Nolvis guide prior to this, and there are specific loot rules to load after, etc. on there. This will clear everything out. You want it to be completely clean. Um, then you can sort it again. Then you're fine. We're not going to get into adding uh, groups or anything like that. We do, however, need the script extender. So, uh, your second icon here, add from archive. I work off my desktop, so I'm going to point this to my desktop. I'm going to point it to this right here. You'll see it, file name will pop up. Hit a op open. You're going to get this the first time you do this. So you're just going to hit the green arrow, I think, like five or six times. Here's a big thing. This is why we always manually check our mods, because not all of them are packaged properly, whether they're manually downloaded or downloaded with manager, doesn't matter. Contents of data does not look valid. Well, it has to look valid. So this isn't data. This is data. You could expand these. These are the scripts. So on this, it's always going to be the data folder in the box, not this top one, right? You can see the name is 20020. We need to right click on this and set this as the directory until it looks green and says it looks valid. I'm going to rename this as well in caps, uh, SKSE scripts, okay? Hit OK, activate it, and we have the script extender up here. Uh, what I'm going to also check is... We have to run it. We have to make sure that the script extender is working in our game. Before you do any other modding, when you install this, 
right? If you go into this and you go into the file tree, you'll see what it is. It's the scripts. There are them here. There is the source scripts. So there's the PEX and the PSC files. More of them in here. So this is everything from the archive. If you were to go back in here, it'd be everything from data, scripts, source, PEX, right? Another way you could do it, if you feel more more comfortable doing it, is taking the folder, right? Right-clicking on data, zipping it up, or adding it to archive, right? And then it will create essentially this exact same thing, right? Some people, when they download this, they, act, they have a, a setting where the archive automatically gets deleted or it goes to like your recycle bin or, or whatnot. This is why I work off the desktop. So I don't have to do this added step, but that is another way to do it. Um, so I'm going to keep these up here for just a second. We're going to uh, run it from SKSC. Remember, if you don't have it, you're going to be running it from here from now on. So, you know, run it from here. Or like I like to do, I, I like to use the icons. So I have SKSC up here. And Brandon, welcome in, buddy. So you guys are going to see the Bethesda logo. You're going to see the game screen. We're only going to do one thing here. When this comes up, do not hit new. Do not hit anything else. You're going to uh, open the console command, tilde key, right? So you can barely see it pop up, but you do see it, right? Just type get SKSE version in uh, non-caps, lowercase. Okay, hit enter. No spaces between that, right? As long as the same SKSE version that you installed shows here, SKSE is installed properly. If you did 2019 and you type get SKSE version, it should say 2019. If you do 2020, it should say the same thing. If you are on Anniversary Edition, it should be whatever the latest uh, up-to-date, properly done AE script extender should be and if you're playing on legendary edition i believe they only have the latest version it should be that one it's the same for all of them right we don't need to do anything else we're not going to run it there's nothing to run close the console and quit out okay now if you go to loot and double check it you'll notice script extender is up to date but you've not sorted don't worry about that i always just sort it to get the errors down you're fine right still have to clean the master files but we also need a few other tools to do that script extender you can get deleted i do not need you anymore my friend be right back all right wind uh okay wind's already seen this a thousand times so she knows what to do we're going to modify our executables. We are going to add other tools in here. A couple ways you can do that. I always use the gears icon for this. But if you feel more comfortable, over here where it says edit at the very top, the reason I don't do this is because it's too close to launching it. And this will launch the Steam version, which you do not want. So I like to use the gears. It does the exact same thing. Under modify executables, you want the little plus arrow uh, a plus icon with the arrow pointing down. It says add an executable, add from file. It's going to take you, it's going to open up just a folder window. Um, I'm going to navigate to my mod tools. We have to add a couple things. First for me is SSE edit. And version 04, we are going to install three, these three. You can see I have the Ruddy 88 ESLFI, but First is sseedit.exe. Just hit open. Uh, I'm going to set this argument to don't cache. I'm also going to do a more advanced thing. It's called I know what I'm doing with no spaces and no apostrophe. D O I N G. You guys probably shouldn't enter this second, co uh, second argument in here. Actually, I'll let me delete this. Let me show you why. Okay, I'll just have the don't cache. Okay. Before you hit OK, you can go back into here 
add from file. And that's what keeps it in the same folder. So if you have multiple things in a tools folder, otherwise you have to go back and search for it again. So we want the quick auto clean. Same thing, don't cache. It's going to cache the first time anyway, but it's fine. So let's apply that. Now what that's going to do, if you refresh it, I don't even think you need to refresh it for that, is it's going to give you SSE edit, the quick auto clean. I only put SSE edit on my toolbars, mainly because they use the same icon. Um, but when we quick clean, uh, well, here, let me show you. When we get to Dawn Guard and I manually clean it, I'll show you why I don't think, if you're doing it for the first time, you shouldn't put, I know what I'm doing. We're going to start cleaning the master files here first. So a couple things you could do. You could just clean these and go, which is perfectly fine. Or you can make a backup copy. So uh, what I like to do is on my desktop, I'm going to go to, uh, we're going to say what? Vanilla ESMs make a new folder okay open up your Skyrim folder open up the vanilla ESMs folder and go into data so you're gonna want what update Dawn Guard, Dragonborn and Hearthfires uh, just make a copy of these just paste them in there for now you could you can close this out. You're you're not really going to need it just yet. Uh, in mod tools, we also have to do this. So in mod organizer, you'll notice now that I have now I have a mods folder, which should just have my SKSE. I'm going to create a new folder, which is going to be a basically a new created mod. Uh, it's going to be called cleaned vanilla. ESMs. Okay. I'm going to minimize this, and when I hit F5 to refresh it, you're going to see this pops up. Okay. I'm actually going to put this above the script extender because it does not matter. Okay. So, uh, what are we going to do? We're going to clean. <coughs> are you resetting your mod list? Yes, I am, Brandon. I actually I wiped everything 100% clean. What I recommend, and I even do this myself because sometimes I forget a step is to go to Lexi's, go to prerequisites, go to her cleaning, which should be after the patcher, tools, all the tools you're going to need. These are her loot groups, by the way. And this is her loot configuration. See how there's lines? Yeah, because I'm not using hers as a setup. Uh, but here are all her specific loot groups. Trivial Smelters of Skyrim, uh, add a new group, MLU patchers, CCOR, complete crafting, complete alchemy, snazzy, etc., etc. So she has a lot of them. Uh, there's Xedit, Mater's uh, Xedit patching framework. I don't need it for what I'm going to be doing. Here is synthesis, though. I am going to need synthesis, so I'm going to grab the latest. It goes to the GitHub mirror. Do not open it. Just right? it in. We're not going to worry about Wicco. We're not going to worry about any of this. Rybash. Rybash could be thrown right in your game folder, perfectly safe. And that's actually where I recommend putting it. Uh, Zedit, we haven't done. We did the script extender. We want to clean our masters. Where are you? Okay. Well, I skipped a step. This is pretty much essential in anybody setup, it's you're gonna create the SKSE any with these parameters. Okay. All it is, uh, just open up the SKSE mod in Explorer, right? Where it says scripts, you only have a folder here. You're gonna create a new folder and you're just gonna name it SKSE. Inside of the SKSE folder, you're gonna create a text document. So you're gonna come down here to text document. And it's going to be skse.ini, delete the .txt. You only want it to say ini. Okay. It's going to give you this warning, rename yes. Okay. And we are going to add this, right? Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight just this part. I'm going to copy it. And inside of the any, 
edit it with notepad and just paste it so it says general clear and valid registrations equals one and your display i tint texture resolution 2048 if you need an explanation of what this does she has a very nice uh very uh, concise description right here make sure you hit file and save other than that you're done with the scripts now does not have a version number this is also something else you could do for SKSE right on the Nexus tab the mod ID number should be zero or minus one so that it doesn't try to search Nexus for the script extender okay keep that at minus one you could change the version number uh, to zero it may change it and then category you want this in the utilities category because that's what it is and you'll see it popped up utilities since it's offsite it's not going to be green maybe hard to see for you guys but that's how it is um, and then what else I like to add I like to add the content flag to mine so let's move this back over so now I have content flags version you don't need although priorities getting a little bit there okay what the content does is it tells you exactly what it is if there's textures it'll say textures you just highlight or you hover over it basically just tells you what these are I like having the content one in here um, when you switch over to your theme like if I go into I don't know dark mode here orange right it looks a little a little bit neater you can see I have no downloads uh, we have no saves obviously and the plugins are still basic um, is dark mode okay for you guys can you see this better than how it was and welcome back wind I am going to throw another pod into the Keurig. We got some new uh, Starbucks. I don't normally drink Starbucks, uh, but they were free. Uh, what do we have here? Cinnamon, vanilla. I have toasted graham. What do I have in here now? Vanilla. Let's go with vanilla again. And Oh, and uh, regular. And of course, we'll make it strong because why not? Well, that's brewing. Let me come back here. Um, anybody have any questions so far? I know I've kind of gone through stuff. Um, I am trying to slow myself down. Normally, I could do this if I'm not streaming it and I'm doing it for myself. My brain pretty much just shuts off and my hand types on the keyboard and uses the mouse. And 20 minutes later, I'm usually done. <laughs> And it just kind of works, to quote an asshole I heard on the internet. Um, yeah. Am I adding from Wabajack Mod Packs? Not for this, Brandon. I could do that in the future. Uh, actually, since I didn't... Well, no, because then I don't want to do this today, because then it, it'd be a Wabajack stream. What I could do is I could reset up before I stream and do a Wabajack install. Because my what like I think what's the largest one on there Eldenari or however you pronounce it that only takes me like a total of 40 minutes to install and get up and running I I've seen people with better spec PCs um, sit there and say it takes them several hours I have no idea why um, the same was for uh, what's the one that uh, geez uh, what if Pedinsky's still here? What do you use? Elysium. Elysium took me less time than Alnari. I I have no idea why. And everything is in there fine, and it runs, and it runs perfectly well for me. Um, it's the same way when I was doing uh, the Wabajack lists for Enderall. Same when I was doing the Wabajack lists for Oblivion. Um, you could see WA, and it brings up Waba for me. Uh, we'll do something with synthesis. Um, so yeah, let's go to Skyrim Special Edition just to see. I know a bunch of these got put out or updated recently. 
Hey, there's Pinsky. Yeah, Elysium. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, GP, Elysium is one I really want to use. Although, Serenity 2 is my favorite. And it's a Requiem. But I gotta say, uh, not visually, but gameplay-wise, it's still probably my favorite. So, you know, ESVS for taking over for Zanza uh, for this and keeping this up. Um, there's Ender All My Way. And I think the Oblivion one actually got changed and they're added. Um, you'll notice for Skyrim Legendary Edition, there's only just the one. It's Ultimate, which is a Requiem list. Um, I kind of wish people would do more for Ellie, but it doesn't seem like authors really want to support Ellie. They just, you know, manually mod it. I, I was surprised because if you go to Oblivion, um, I believe... Was Heartland the one that changed from the Bevelax guide? I mean, there's two main ones right here. Yeah, Bevelax's uh, fa uh, fantastic manual guide. Yeah, I believe Heartland is the one that changed over. SE version is coming out soon. Oh, yeah, for Wildlander. Yeah, and you know what I wish they would do? Um, let's go back to special edition here, right? So, uh, Phoenix. Where's Phoenix? Phoenix has a bunch on here, right? J.D. Smith's another really good one. He did the Ender All My Way. Yeah, Phoenix flavor, right? I wish Phoenix, or uh, the team, you know, with Phoenix here, would do some of these for Ellie. Because I feel like the Ellie players are getting kind of, you know, gypped with Lava Jack content. Like, you, if you wanted to use it, but you didn't want to mod it yourself, y you've got Ultimate. But it's a Requiem one. So, like, there are no non-Requiem Ellie Wabba Jack lists. I think there was, but this must have been earlier this year. Uh, Relics of Hyrule. I actually tried this out. It was pretty fun. Uh, it was different, but it was fun. This is Elysium. This is the this is the one that uh, GP uses. I love the graphics of this. This looks fantastic. Um, Eldenari, I could run in 60 frames. No problem with my specs. It's big. Um... I don't like it as much as what I've seen from Elysium. Uh, pl having played this myself, but not having used this, uh, I, I have to say Elysium is better. Titan's Bane did a fantastic job with this. Uh, have I used Tinvok 2? I don't believe I have. And like some of these, I've used Living Skyrim. Uh, Sekiro, I have not. Arcee. So some of these are new to me since it's been a while. Path of the Dovahkin, like this is new. Our case commandment I did hear of, but I, I I didn't use it. Okay, and that's it. Yeah, these are the names. Septimus is another one that I've... And, you know, obviously the stuff that Phoenix does. Uh, Phoenix has been around for quite some time. So, Kaizal was another one that I did use. TSO I did use. Serenity I've used multiple times. Uh, Librum, I don't believe I've installed it. But I believe I watched somebody who was streaming this, like, for three weeks straight but anyway Wabba Jack yeah I wish uh, I'll do a Wabba Jack uh, install stream one of these days it just won't be today unfortunately I need my coffee uh, who else needs coffee where's me six wind where's windbot windbot gives everybody coffee me six he's a little bastard he uh he only gives it to you once in a while, and when he's in a good mood. And I can't, I can't fire him, and I can't ban him. Wins, wins, Winbot is uh is very kind. I should create something like that for uh for my channel. <laughs> Redeemed hydrate, Lex. Thank you. That's exactly what I'm doing with my coffee. Uh, I don't have a pen here, but I am, I am sipping it so. Ah. <laughs> banned. The no longer banned. Then banned again. <laughs> nice. Oh, is it another bot? See, the bots must sit here. And they know when I get up. So I don't see it. You unbanned it and I banned it again. <laughs> I didn't unban it. What did I just say? Buy followers? Is that is that the new thing? The link to buy followers? You could just add ban terms. Yeah. 
I have a few that are in there. If you guys feel like adding the terms, uh, any of my mods, feel free to add them in. I just like when it's like actual trolls coming in, because I like to have fun with them. Um, cleaning the cleaning of the masters. Okay. So Lexi goes into some detail. So like merge plugins hide. These are mod organizer two plugins. Um, what this is is if you go to mo two. Uh, mod organizer, your plugins folder, you'll notice you'll have some stuff here. What uh, she does with hers is that this, it's the deorder plugins 1.1, one, one, and it tells you how to do it, hide uh, optional, follow these directions. I'm not going to be using this. Prepare merge, again, if you're following her guide, just do it to the letter, right? Make sure the O in optional is lowercase. This is very important. Idiot check is what it says. <laughs> Uh, cleaning of the masters, here we go. Cool. Create a backup of the original files, navigate to Skyrim Special Edition Data, which I did. Right? We grabbed Update, Dawnguard, Hearthfires, and Dragonborn ESM. They are inside here on my desktop. Okay. Let's close that down. Open this back up. If the game files... Or the game files contain... I'd, ITM and UDR, so identical to master records, undeleted references, and require cleaning. So, we have the backups. SSE, quick, auto clean. Run it. Update takes the longest. Don't show this on startup. Uh, don't show this on startup. This one takes a second to close. Uh, but do thank Elminster. Uh, he does have a Patreon, a coffee, a PayPal. Uh, if you guys are so inclined without this tool uh, our game would be buggy Eagle AF so um, no module selected let me just you guys that have done this already know this you can feel free to do other things while I do this if you haven't seen it yet I'm showing it to you now select only one at a time so we're starting with update we're gonna go all the way down to Dragonborn this is the quick auto clean uh, one step for Dawn Guard requires manual cleaning, and since I do know that by heart, I'll be doing it that way. Uh, don't show the tips. And now, with the new version, uh, you're going to get this cancel box in the center. If you need to cancel it, don't hit this. I really wish they didn't add this in. Okay. It's kind of a pain. Uh, let me see if I can... We're going to switch over from data. Let me go to my mod tools folder and let me see if I can add synthesis in here. Okay. We'll just extract synthesis here. I'm not going to do anything with it. Um, but you can see that the zip file I no longer need. I just like to have everything in there. Okay, cool. So we can get rid of synthesis. Uh, let's go back here. Update takes the longest. Hearthfires takes the least amount of time. It's just how it is take you anywhere from a couple seconds to almost immediately. Hey, and GeForce uh, has a new driver update. Awesome. Good to know. I'll have to do that at some point today. I've done that with... Oh, yeah, the big follows. Yeah. That was the other one, too. The big follows. And, like, there's certain terms that I mean, I don't have a lot of stuff in the filter for, like, banned terms just because uh, it's an 18-plus adult stream. It's kind of the requirement, because um, I do curse, and, uh, you know, I'm not shy about things. But there are, like, some things that I, I have to the band, but, you know, sometimes it's needed, sometimes it's not. Hey, Maladroth, what's up? Am I going to be going over synthesis? Uh, today, uh, if I have time, if you guys want to stick around and there's stuff within synthesis that you want me to do, I could do it. Um, I was going to, uh, this is going back a couple months now, I was actually going to live stream over the course of a couple days Lexi's entire setup. Now, I'm not doing a Lexi setup today. But I do use hers as a reference for certain things that I, I do every single time. Uh, what I was going to do is, over the course of a couple days, live stream her entire setup. Um, 
Somebody else already did it, and they did a really good job of it, so there's no need for me to. Uh, I forget the user's name. I want to say the name Phoenix is in there, but it's not the same Phoenix that I just showed you. Like, not like uh, Phoenix that did the Wabajack list. I believe it's somebody else. So, you can see it's still applying filter to update. I really, like I said, I really wish the cancel box was not here anymore because it's right in the middle, and I don't want to touch it because I don't want it to stop the cleaning. So just kind of like leave it there. And Mace is off to play some Chaotic Vol uh, Valtheim. Okay. Awesome, Mace. I appreciate you stopping in. Do not press... You know, and it's not even red. You know, I think if it was... I think that's why. If it was red, people would press it. But it's gray. And it's like the first thing that pops up. So... And it's right there in your face, just saying cancel. But there's nothing else. Like, it's a box inside of a box, and it's gray. It's darker gray inside of lighter gray. And I don't think I'm going too colorblind here. So, you can see how long uh, update's taking me. Um, I'm going to blame streaming uh, using resources for this. I don't really have much else open. Is this Bayo's server saying I'm live? Yeah, probably. Yeah, new content. Oh, no. Hey. So those of you that aren't, uh, check out Strudel. This is uh, her link. I, I have her in my About section here. She put a new chapter, Chapter 8. So free uh, free promo. There you go. <laughs> From Discord. It is still applying my filter. And I see that it's still off the screen a little bit. Hold on, let me move it. I'll have that fixed for next time. I have to have it on just enough so that... There we go. The carry weight hit from Serenity is so... Yeah. Yeah. Alright. Update's done. Once you see uh, quick auto clean finish, background loader finished, you're done. And almost five minutes for this one. It usually takes less. It usually is somewhere in the high two-minute mark when I'm not streaming. So update's done. Close that out. You're going to get a notification here. Uh, you have files in your overwrite mod, which is right here. It's just backups, which you don't need. Uh, so don't worry about that. Um, just run, you, you can clean it out if you want to. I don't. I just clean it out all at once. Run your auto clean again. So this time you're just going to go right down the list. You're only going to select Dawn Guard. Now you're going to see Update gets the box in there. That's because Update is a master for Dawn Guard. Just as long as the check is in there, you're good to go. So hit that. Hit OK. Um, ah, there's the cancel. I was waiting for it. <laughs> uh, all the rest of them, aside from Dawn Guard, take a lot less time. Uh, so like I said, if I'm not streaming... Hearthfire is, is literally less than 10 seconds. Or about 15 seconds. Applying filter. Dawn Guard's going to stay red uh, just because there are some manual edits that we're going to make. But we're going to we're gonna make the manual edits. You, well, you could do it after you do Dawn Guard. You know, it's fine. So you got rid of seven ITMs right here. Uh, 57 deleted nav. I'm sorry, 759. 82 undeleted references, 57 nav. And then it cleans the nav. There's some dirty edits. Yeah, 57. What you could do once you close this out, because this is technically done, is you could switch from the quick clean to the regular SSC edit, the manual editing. Um, and do it that way. But I, I like to get all of the quick clean done at once. The order in which you do this does not matter. Okay? I know this has probably been brought up before, and some people say you have to manually clean Dawn Guard right after you auto clean it. Other people say the exact opposite. They're like, no, manual cleaning must be done after the quick cleaning. It doesn't matter. You can clean it whenever you like. If you're on Dawn Guard and you want to get the manual cleaning done, by all means, do it. Um, I just like to quick clean everything and then manual clean it. Just personal preference. So, run the auto cleaner again. 
We'll go to hearth fires this time. You'll notice update is also ticked. Run it on hearth fires. We can't see Lex. What do you mean? This might. Oh no, you could see. It's right in the center there. I could see it. Yeah, I, I'll I'll have that fixed for the next time. See, ah, even even with streaming, 16 seconds. Yeah. Now, hearth fires. 221 ITMs, 11 undeleted references, five nav issues. Uh, the ITMs are really the least of your worries. It's the UDRs and any nav, you know. So if you were to go, I don't know, say location, Honeyside, if you wanted to see what this did. Oh, let me expand this a little bit, right? When you install this for the first time, it will show you absolutely everything possible. If you right click anywhere in here and select hide no conflict with empty rows, it will only show you conflicts that you need to either take care of or or overwritten. And there you go. So from going from Skyrim, nothing from update, but Hearthfires does change this. I'm going to leave this alone for now so you guys can see everything. Uh, but we don't have to do anything else with hearth fires. We are done. Close that out. We have one more to do, which is the Dragonborn DLC. And you'll notice that update again. Get selected. Dragonborn doesn't really take too much longer. Uh, actually, I think it's a little bit quicker. Yeah, it's done. Seven seconds. How about that? Only 81 ITMs. So... Dragonborn's done, so you're good. Uh, now for the manual cleaning. Now, like I said, this is my SSE edit. This is the normal version, this right here. I don't ever put my auto clean up top here. Just I don't want to hit it by accident. So I'm going to run it. What you're going to need to do is when you first run SSE edit, it's going to auto select everything here, but you do not want everything selected. So right click in here and just select none. Uh, just select Dawnguard. You're going to see Skyrim and Update because they are both masters for Dawnguard. You need them like that in the box. Hit OK. This is going to take a little bit longer. Um, and it's really easy to do. I, I just, I, I happen to know this by heart from doing it so many times. Uh, if you're, if you're unsure, uh, for the manual cleaning, Dawnguard ESMs require manual Exedit cleaning and on Lexi's page here, she gives you a very detailed guide of what you need to do. There are three zones that need to be cleaned. Um, I already know them, so we're basically just going to wait for Dungar to finish. Gamer Poets, yeah, he does. He's got a, a video on all this. So if you go to his YouTube channel, I highly recommend you guys. Um, I don't know if I have him added in, I think I do on my about section. Uh, and he's going to be putting more videos out after the new year from what it seems like he said. He's been doing some uh, like pers personal like home construction or setup for his, uh, his studio, uh, among other things. But he did say he was going to be getting into some more content. I would assume after the new year. So uh, anyway, background loader finished is what you want to see. It took me under a minute to do this. You're going to expand. Let me... Let me lower this down. You're going to expand the Dawn Guard, right? You're going to come to the cell setting, and I like to put cell kind of up at the top. You're going to expand this down. You're going to get blocks, okay? Uh, the first one is block 3, sub block 5, I think? Or is it block 5, sub block 3? Alright, yeah, see, I already messed up. To where it says Rift and Ragged Flagon. Let's expand this a little bit. And right there. So you can do this uh, a couple ways. If you click on here, uh, normally you would have to find this uh, cell, which is down at the bottom under the uh, encounter zone, right? And if you do it the way that I like to do it, which is hide no conflicts and empty rows, it will auto populate right at the top here, like this for you. So whatever is easier for you guys to do it, if you like seeing everything uh, in Xedit, 
By all means. Um, I do this just to save myself some time. Uh, make sure you're under O2 Dawn Guard, okay? So right here, right click, you're going to hit remove. Now remember, when I was setting up SSC Edit, I put in the in the arguments, dash, I know what I'm doing, right? And I removed that argument to show you. This is why. So uh, without the argument in there, when you go to hit remove, it's going to prompt you. It's going to give you this warning to make sure that you are absolutely sure, and it gives you a couple second countdown before you can actually hit yes. If you have the I know what I'm doing argument in there, when you go, like, let's see, let's see, hmm, let me think about it some more, All right? When you go to right click and remove, instead of getting that warning, you have to do exactly what that argument says. You have to absolutely be sure you want to remove it because you will not get a warning. And as soon as I hit remove, this will be gone. So if you're comfortable with that, add it into the arguments. If you, you know, aren't or you just don't mind having the warning pop up you don't need to add it you're fine but i am i'm absolutely sure uh, i want to remove this so we're going to hit yes and you'll see that that's gone this is now turned green uh what's the other one block two sub block one uh cw guard templates now this is already green you can see but it has changed from skyrim to dawn guard you'll see there's one value for directional fade and zero the guard templates itself needs to be removed, but you remove it right from here, this side here. So you right click, remove is down here, you're gonna get this warning. Are you sure it's different than the other one? Yeah, Xedit has a dark mode. I don't use it because I am so used to the normal Xedit non-dark mode Paninsky. It looks, the dark mode looks a lot nicer than this, I'll be honest, but I am so used to this and seeing it that when I tried the dark mode, uh, I couldn't really adjust to it. I'm sure if I use it consistently, I'll be okay. But I'm I'm just I'm fine with this one for now. So yeah, so here's the cell. You'll see. So you want to make sure it's on the templates, and then just hit yes. And then I I like to uh, close the blocks back up. So you can see they're highlighted in black. So block five has been modified. Block two, and the other one's block eight, sub block one. The entire sub block gets removed, but if you're curious, it's the test Jeremy. Delete when done. You're going to want to uh, left click once and then right click on the sub block one. Hit remove. It's going to give you the nice little warning again. Are you sure? Hit yes. You're done. You have three modified blocks. Hit the X to uh, close out and it'll prompt you to save, or you can come in here and save it this way before you close it out. I just hit the X because it auto saves for you. Or I should say it prompts you to save changes. Uh, unselect backup plugins. You don't need that checked, but you do need Dawn Guard ESM checked because that's what you're modifying. So hit OK when you're done. It says done saving. Uh, stuff in the overwrite. You can see the backups have been done. Delete them. Don't need them. And now when we run loot, you'll see everything is nice and clean. Sort your plugins, you have nothing and nothing. You could run the game again if you want to, but you don't need to. Uh, we do need to take care of the vanilla ESMs though. So let me put uh, that up here. All right. Create a new mod in MO2 called Clean Vanilla ESMs, which is right here. We've done that already. I did that ahead of time. In the Skyrim data folder, cut and paste the following from to the cleaned vanilla ESMs folder. So go into data. And you're going to want to have the cleaned vanilla ESMs open. Put them side by side. right? If you're unsure about this, don't do this step. If you clean these... Uh, DLC the way that you just saw me do it technically you are fine to play your game I do this step because I use multiple profiles uh, I use one specifically for modding this default one is going to get changed and renamed and actually def the, the whole default here is going to be deleted at some point right? because I use multiple profiles um, I like to have this as a backup just in case 
Uh, you guys may back it up a different way. Alright. So, if you're unsure, you're going to cut and paste from your data. So, the ones that you just cleaned are going to be now put into the new. So, uh, you want update. Not Skyrim, just update. Uh, Dawnguard, Dragonborn, and Hearthfires. You are going to cut. Not copy, you're going to cut. And put them into the created mon, the clean vanilla ESMs. You'll notice they're gone from your data folder. Okay? But that's okay. Keep this one open. Uh, let me minimize some things. Minimize MO2. This clean vanilla ESMs, we're going to bring this down. We're going to take our backups, the originals, right? These are just the basic vanilla ESMs. We are going to highlight all of them. We're also going to cut them from here, and we're going to paste them into the game folder. Don't worry, they'll populate in the right place if you close this down. So we actually don't need this folder anymore. Get rid of it. Let's go back to the special edition. Then if I go back into data, you'll see they've been placed in the right spot. So. Um, in Mod Organizer 2, you'll see that it's still on an X. Well, just F5 to refresh it. And now you have a clean vanilla ESM folder with them here, right? And you'll see the three grayed out conflict overwrites, meaning the DLCs are all in here. They're redundant. This shows you in the file tree what they are. I am comfortable doing it this way, guys. If you're not, don't worry about it. Okay. So you've never heard uh, the advice to do the quick auto clean or the manual. Oh, in any order. Yeah. 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 Maladroff. It, it does not matter. Does not matter. Uh, let me see what else. Let me get back to the chat here. Does dark mode carry over? To the quick auto clean as well. It should. Uh, well, first let's uh, let's do this. Let's. I'm gonna run this. I'm not gonna clean anything, but I want to see if I had the option to choose. No, you don't. All right. Uh, let's not select anything. Let's run normal SSE edit, and I'll pull up. Let's just uh, select none. Let's just pick hearth fires for now. And then what I'll do is I'll switch this over to the dark mode and I'll show you guys. This one should be the quickest loading anyway. It's the reason why. Actually, I think Dragonborn loaded quicker. I don't know. It was with the quick clean. This is with the manual. I'll switch it over to dark mode and we'll just see. I think it does. I'm pretty sure it does. Worst case, I could, um, worst case is, is no, but I think it does. They're two separate executables, so it makes sense. That doesn't, oh, okay. Just tested in my quick auto clean and still white. Oh, okay. Never mind. So what Padinsky said. Uh, let me wait till this finishes and then I'll just close it out. See, this is what having, uh, people in chat that also know exactly what they're doing can help other people. Let me just close that down. All right, so there's no need to do that. Uh, what are we doing? Let me see what we have here. So uh, we have SKSE. We have the creation kit. Uh, creation kit can be run from MO2. And this is how I run it. Um, so like with the fixes, if I want to load up, say, I don't know, just Skyrim and update and hit OK. It'll take a second or two, or three. And then, um, if you want to check the log, I, I tend to minimize this, but but it's up. And that's as quick as it is with those additions. You don't get the pop-up window saying yes to all, yes to all, yes to all, shut the hell up. <laughs> um, trying to think of what else I wanted to add. We basically have a clean game. The DLCs, uh, we have the clean vanilla ESMs, the script extender works, we ran the base game. Uh, 
Let's see. Bethany. Depending on how you want to do your setup. Bethany is very fickle. It can be. It's uh, a lot of people run it and scratch their heads and then they have weird settings and things like that. So it's really going to be what you know of the tool. You have to have Mod Organizer closed down. I'll go over it briefly. Let's run Bethany. Mod Organizer can't even be open. You have to close it down. So we'll run it. And unfortunately, I can't expand this. So we're going to select Special Edition. All right. It's going to do its thing. It's going to load. Okay. Now, in Setup, the Any Path by default will go to your Special Edition. Um, if I want to change this to say Default, uh, Mod Tools, Mod Organizer, Profiles, Default. Your any files were reverted. Okay, it will restart. Enable yes, and then if you go back to setup, you will now see it. Your base any path is C mod. Well, this is for me. Yours is going to be different. It may be on a different drive. It may not. You may not have a mod tools specifically named folder, but it will say mod organizer profiles, and then whatever the name of your profile is. So, I got ahead of myself with Bethany. I wanted to create. A different profile. So let's close Bethany. Keep any changes you've made. No, I don't want to do anything. Let's open up MO2. All right. Default. You could do one of two things. The configure profiles or you can manage. I like to use configure profiles. Uh, always have use uh, profile specific save games and use profile specific game any files. Okay. I'm just going to make a quick copy of default and I'm going to name it uh, Magus80 main profile. This is typically my main profile. Um, I would sometimes like just put dash legacy or LOTD because I almost always run legacy of the dragonborn. Um, I'm just going to leave it like this for now. Okay. And we're going to make another copy of this and we're going to name it uh, SSE, not, not vanilla, modding profile, and click OK. So when you see these, make sure the user specifics, right? Uh, let's close this out. Now, instead of default, I'm going to select my main profile. This is the one I'm going to do all my modding on. I'm also going to go to manage, and I'm going to highlight default, and I'm going to remove this entirely. Why have something up there when you don't need it? It's how I do it. If you want to leave default on there, it's not going to hurt anything. Just make sure when you're cycling through, you have these two selected. Now, automatic archive and validate and validation shouldn't uh, pop up unless I think you have one of these deselected. But um, anytime I do modding, it's going to be on a modding or a vanilla profile setup. Um, reason being is that I right click and I would disable any mods that are in here aside from the one or ones that I need loaded. So like for me recently, it was my standing stone mod. On my base profile, of course, I have everything enabled and I'm going in order of certain things, right? Um, on my modding profile, I really just want what I'm working on, when I'm working on it. So you need everything, you right click, you disable all, you can enable all, you can collapse or expand, yada yada. Okay. So now that we have a created profile, let's close MO2, let's go back to Bethany. Since it already detected SSE, you can see it's already done auto stuff for us. Ignore it. Alright Lex, gotta go to bed? Hey, no worries buddy. Get a good rest. I've made separate executables and have them reference the same any, so it's possible to have two or more. Yeah, you can do that. But I are a lazy programmer. <laughs> I am not a programmer, Maladrasi. You are uh, several legs up on me. <laughs> uh, we want to change this to my main. So it's the same thing. Browse. Profiles. Just have it at Magus80 main. You'll see whatever yours is named. 
Um, because this is the main profile I'm going to work off of. File name Skyrim I and I. Don't worry about that. And open. Your files were reverted. Any file will change. It's going to do its thing. And now we have the main. Okay. Untick modify custom innies. Uh, automatically check for updates. Make sure it stays that. You don't need to do anything else. Uh, mod organizer, I do recommend putting it in here. I don't know why. I think with the latest edition of Bethany, it doesn't auto detect where mod organizer is. But just browse uh, to mod tools and mod organizer. It'll go to the exe, which is what you want. Right there. Okay. Basic. This is the first tab it auto uh, defaults to. So if you're not curious, or I should say if you're curious as to uh, what you set your d default display resolution, this would be what your monitor's native is. So for me, it's 2560 by 1440. That's, I have Asus. Uh, P279Q. I, I bought this when it was new. There are better monitors out there than this uh, with higher resolutions. Obviously, the 4K stuff, you should have an option for that. I actually don't go with my native. I go with 1920 by 1080 because it's going to save you on performance. It's how I hit 60 frames with over a thousand mods. And honestly, I can't, with an E and B, I can't tell the difference between the 2560 by 1440 and the 1080. I really can't. If you if you can, your eyes are way better than mine are. I can't tell visually difference. I can see a performance drop for me running over a thousand uh, with the 2560 by 1440. Listen, are you gonna, are you so, I'll I'll briefly just go over a couple things. So I like to keep it here. I don't ever think it needs to be over the 1080, right? Any aliasing, not a fan of. Uh, if you were going to pick it, pick TAA. That's the only option here. I turn mine off. Other things here. Recommended tweaks. Select this. Then it's going to be your presets, what you want. Basically, when you run the game from Steam, you're going to basically set your, I guess, your GPU settings or your, your performance settings. Poor, low, medium, high, ultra. Default will revert absolutely everything in here. So if you click default, you will have to go back and manually fix what it did. So don't hit default unless you just want to reset everything. Um, I'm retired, so I guess I should have said I was. <laughs> I never started. I just, it's not, not anything I was ever good at. Um, kudos to you, though. I usually pick higher ultra. Um, I can run things on ultra at 60 frames with the Bethany setting, and you'll see a lot of things change. Uh, so let's run ultra. Let's let's go ultra. Give you the uh, see anti-aliasing turn back. Yeah, yeah. All right. So I select windowed, borderless, 64-bit render. Uh, I believe that is unticked. VSync is unticked. Lock frame rate is unticked. Leave FPS at 60 because we will do this later. General. Uh, I don't believe anything. You want the intro logos unticked and the post load up update time needs to stay 2000. This should, by default, you shouldn't have to change anything on the general tab here. Uh, if you don't want intro music, you can untick sound. Max auto saves of three. If you want to change it to more or less, you could do it here, but I don't tick anything because I don't have this so uh, your screenshot directory this is another thing if you want to change it this is where you change it from from Bethany you can browse pick where you like I keep it default it will go into my Skyrim game folder and I will have screenshots in here along when I add EMB I will have EMB files so you'll get basically get doubles I delete the EMBs I uh, batch extract the uh, screenshots and I put them right on my desktop and I'll put them in a like Skyrim SE screenshots folder or if I'm done uploading them to show people like you know what I'm currently running then I just delete them and then I get rid of them out of the recycling bin so that's where mine go to so I leave it alone 
Uh, under gameplay. Uh, remove borders. Leave that unticked. Always run by default. Leave that ticked. Over encumbrance reminder will normally hit you every 30 seconds. And you could, if you highlight over this, Bethany does a nice job. It says, set the time interval between subsequent. You are carrying too much to be able to run messages in seconds. General. And this would be under your any. It would say F encumbrance reminder timer. I go by Lexi's and I set it to 60. You can manually type in, I think, anything. Like if I wanted to do 35, you could do 35. If I wanted it to remind me every five seconds, I would put five. Uh, but I go to 60, okay? Uh, third person arrow tilt up, I am at 0 0.7. This is off of Lexi's guide. And this is an important one for me, personally. The NPCs use ammo. So for NPCs that have a bow or crossbow, they don't have unlimited ammunition anymore. It's more realistic, obviously. You're going to run out of ammo. They should run out of ammo. I keep this ticked. It's B-Force NPCs use ammo under the combat in your any section. Okay? It tells you right there. All you do is just hover over it. Disable uh, combat dialog. If you want that tick, you can. I like the combat dialog, so I don't touch it. Uh, other than that, uh, play around with the angles. The first and first person bolt, I leave alone when running Bethany. You did see me change this because uh, I personally like this setting for third person. Okay. Uh, we're also going to supplement the arrow angle with proper aiming mod uh, from Nexus. Just so that it doesn't always... Uh, you, you may highlight an NPC in third person for archery and it's if without that mod it's gonna kind of go to the right hand side so it doesn't properly aim hence the name of the mod wish there was a disable combat dialogue option for greedfall <laughs> just disable all combat dialogue yep um so here's where it starts to get in, in the interface tab you can auto enable General, uh, general dialogue subtitles and the dialogue and it's obviously giving you the any and where they belong in the interface right for now I live I leave this unticked because when I do my game testing I don't like to have to go in to disable the dialogues uh, reason for that is I don't like dialogue popping up when I'm doing my testing if I'm looking at area edits if I'm looking at added NPCs so when they talk I don't like having it just auto pop up and then I don't like having to go into my any settings to turn the, to turn this off so when I go in game I just go under what's it not maybe it's under display under your base settings not not your uh, your M MCM stuff just under your base settings um, you have options to turn the dialogue on and off I do it from there from inside the game so I leave those unchecked Bethesda modding platform I untick this uh, so that'll no longer show up but mods and creation club buttons will still be active albeit probably broken yeah so I disable that mod manager menu you absolutely want this this is your MCM so when you install sky UI you need this to show up otherwise you have to go add B mod manager menu enable in general so keep this ticked. Show quest markers, yes. Show compass, yes. Um, if you have something like iHUD that hides everything, you, you still need these ticked. Uh, so when you need to show it, otherwise you'll have nothing. Uh, if you want to play a really immersive game, uh, untick them all. Or untick uh, quest markers and show compass. That way nothing will pop up. Uh, people that I know that like to do that are people that like to play like either hardcore survival, permadeath, where they have absolutely nothing. There is no HUD. There's no enemy detection. Like when you get into combat, your screen stays the same. You can't tell where the enemy's coming from. You can only tell if you have the combat music playing. And some people even turn that off. I don't know why you would. I love combat music. Uh, but there is that option. So, uh, fix map, menu navigation. I leave this alone. Remove map menu bar. Uh, I also leave this alone. Don't touch anything else. Your mouse sensitivity would be this top one, so your lock sensitivity. I leave it at default, but play around with it and change it. And then, of course, your mouse wheel zoom speed is defaulted at 10. Uh, play around with that if you're, you know, whatever. The console, nothing in here to see. of Nothing of note, I should say. So, uh, detail tab. This is really where it's going to come down to 
uh, checking settings. By default, you can have everything here ticked, and then when you go into Mod Organizer or Vortex, you should have an any editor. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on Vortex, uh, but in Skyrim, it could also be found in Documents, uh, My Games, Special Edition, and there is your any and your prefs any. Okay? These two here. You also see I have an SKSE as saves, uh, mod organizer saves, and the Bethany cache. So you can edit them from here. If you're ever unsure, keep them ticked. You can always set them to zero to turn them off. Okay? And that's just another spot. MO2, I'll show you where that's at. Uh, I'm pretty sure most of you guys already know where the any, any editor is at there, but I will show it at the end of this. Um, field of view, I set mine to 85 by default. Particles, uh, I'll show, I'll turn that to 7,500. 7, Decal quality is going to be ultra for me because that's what I set. Uh, but you can change it here. Low, medium, high, poor, ultra. Um, I disable the lens flare. I don't like it. I disable ambient occlusion. I can always fix this later. 4096 for the shadows. Since we're on ultra, this shadows and grass density are two of the biggest FPS hits. Your shadows, unless you're on like a 3090 with like the best of the best, and even then your shadow quality is still going to affect your performance. At the very minimum, put this at 2048, okay? half the resolution. You could highlight this and see what it does. Performance cost of 10%. You may not think that's a lot. Eyeshadow map resolution under displays where you're going to find it. See it there? If your shadows are still giving you issues, drop it to 1024. If you're on a potato, drop it to 512 or 2. I wouldn't recommend. 1024 at the very minimum. Your shadow should be fine. I'm good with 2048. Um, the bias scale. Uh, 0 0.47. This is just my personal settings, and like I said, I'd use a lot of this stuff from Lexi's. Uh, because whatever EMB I have, I can also configure it from there as well. Or I can configure it directly from the any settings in Mod Organizer. Um, the draw detail distance. Uh, you know what I'm going to do here? Let's go back to basic. I'm going to select high. I'll show you how this changes. Okay. Unlock VSync. Uh, we're going to turn this off, keep the recommended tweaks. Let's see what else changed. That's fine. Gameplay. This hasn't changed. Interface. This hasn't changed. Detail. You'll see particles has changed to 2000. All right, so I max desired for particles under the any settings. You'll see a couple other things. Let's untick ambient occlusion. You'll see 2048 is now the default. If I had this at 4096 and I reverted back to high instead of ultra, it would have defaulted to 2048, so we're fine. Shadow bias, however, will be at 0 0.15, 0 0.47, just because. You'll also notice the detail draw distance at uh, 2800 and exterior draw distance at 8000. I'm comfortable with these. Okay. Screen, uh, screen space reflection, I leave alone. I don't think I've ever modified that. Um, I don't remove the shadows, and I leave these alone as well. The sun's shadow transitions you want to leave alone. Ambient occlusion, like I said, personal preference, I turn it off. Your view distance, there are only a couple things in here that I change, mainly my grass fade. I set it to 18,000, okay, which is basically max. You could use the slider, right? I think it starts at, what, 10? So you could manually come in here and do it. Or you can come in here and double left click to highlight all 18,000. I'm going to leave the levels alone for now. You can change these. Don't touch your U grids, please. Leave it at 5. I know some people bump it to 7. And those people know exactly what they're doing and their game looks nice. I know what I'm doing. I still don't touch it. Okay. Leave the light fade alone. Anything here, this is all fine. Leave this fine. And then visuals. The only thing here is going to be our grass. I'm going to start it at 60. And the diversity is going to be 15. This will change based off of what grass you run. So for example, 
Skyrim Flora overhaul with the grass. So it's the trees and the grass, the uh, AIO package, right? It doesn't go based off of all other grass mods that I've seen on Nexus where most authors will say 60 is default for the iMini grass size. All right, this is your density. The higher this number is, the less grass you're going to see. So if I set this to 90, it's going to reduce the amount of grass I see in my game, essentially bumping up my FPS and my overall performance. If I were to set this from 60 to 40, it's going to be more dense, kind of the opposite of the numbers. So the lower the number, the more dense it's going to be. The higher the number, the less dense it's going to be. If I set this down, now SFO is different. SFO starts at 20, uh, but it follows its own any. It's totally different. So while it's a good example, it's also a really bad example. You have to get comfortable with that. And I believe its diversity goes up to 7 or default at 7. So we're going to leave it at 60 and 15. Um, then when you go to pick your grass mod, your grass mod may be something different. So I think like Tamrielic grass, which is something that I know Padinsky uh, has in his uh, setup that he's doing for his Wabajack list. I've used it myself. I think it defaults at 58 if I'm not mistaken. So it's a little more diverse. Um, I just turn it right back to 60, or I leave it at 58, depending on what else I'm running. There's other grass mods that'll say, like, uh, Verdant. I would probably put Verdant or something like Vedosprum at 70. Because it's still going to look fantastic. As long as you have the diversity at 15, um you'll just you'll gain a little bit of performance without uh, a too too much of a noticeable uh, drop in the grass density the performance cost I think you know 60 to 70 if you have a really you know good GPU and uh, like your hardware is better than what mine is drop it down to 40 or 20 see how it performs custom we're not going to worry about this this is uh, a custom any setting so once you're done with visuals and you change this you're going to want to go back to the basic tab and save and exit. It's going to do a little flicker thing. Now we can open up MO2 again. Apologize about that being long, guys. Um, I just kind of wanted to go over each of the tabs that I modify. If you don't want to run Bethany at all, by all means, you don't have to. Oh, it looks like 52 for Tamrielic GP. Nice. Yeah, I probably should have checked on the mod page first. Uh, I love Tamrielic Grass. It's probably my new favorite. For those of you that haven't seen it, um, this is by far probably one of the best grass mods I think I've ever used. I'm gonna put it in this new setup myself. Uh, I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna put multiple grass mods in. I'm just gonna use this. Um, I love what this does. I was in GP Stream when he added it in, and I got to, you know, be on the on the user side, like the the watcher side of the stream. And I got to see him look at the grass and just kind of giggle. I don't know if he actually giggled. I don't remember. <laughs> I was giggling watching him enjoy it. Because I, I love modding streams, by the way. So other people that do it, um, if you're curious about thinking if other people would watch your stream if you decide to do something like this, I absolutely would. And I know a shit ton of other people that would, too. It's not for everybody, but, you know. And you'll notice, um, stuff like this is in other mods too. I think this is in Kynes Grass. It's in Northern Grass. They have similar things. Like, these are not harvestable uh, plants. Just part of the grass itself. Uh, Coast Grass, Frozen Mar Yeah, all right, so I'm not going to go through all the pictures for you. Um, there's no other requirements for it. And, yeah. Goes with the landscape. The landscape's pretty nice too. I do use Tamrielic uh, Textures Landscape Mod, um, but I, there's some files in here that I hide. This is fantastic. Can't pronounce the author's name, uh, so I'm not going to attempt to butcher it. But fantastic mod. Um, what else? Here? Let's go back to. I don't know what we're we doing here. Oh, the any editor. So in the jigsaw puzzle, um, let me just F5 to refresh. So even though we just opened it, you would come here. Let me see if I can expand this a little bit. Can I? Does it allow me to? Yeah, it does. Um, so one thing that 
it changes is going to be if you go to the prefs any right and you go to display you'll notice it's hard to see i know b full screen equals zero right so the settings that i chose with bethany actually reverted my full screen to disabling it entirely what that is is here if we run the game with skac watch what's going to happen all right they allow a grass mod to share some yeah I, and i think that that's cool that authors allow other authors to do that gp um yeah so just know like and when i first started using bethany and I started using the sliders, nobody told me that it reverted back. And of course, I was still new to the any editor, so I didn't know how to change it back. I was freaking out, like, I can't play like this. Shit, I'm gonna start streaming, and what the hell do I do? But, you know, SKSE should be perfectly fine like it is. Let's quit out. Let's change that. We want it full screen. So any editor, Skyrim prefs, uh, go to display. Be full screen is going to equal one right there. Save it. Now when we run it, there you go. Perfect. You guys see it? We're full screen. Uh, we're windowed borderless full screen. So... That's kind of important with Skyrim. I like to be able to alt tab out uh, because if it freezes, I'll, I'm able to pull up my task manager, which you guys got to see what yesterday, <laughs> a couple times. Uh, so I have some Bethany settings. Uh, we clean the masters. We manually cleaned uh, Dawn Guard. We installed uh, SKSE. Well, it's self-installed. We installed uh, SSE Edit. We installed Loot. Uh, we enabled the Creation Kit. I have my tools up here. Try to think of what else is sort of pertinent. Let me see my running time here. What's my uptime? Almost three hours. So yeah, these are Lexi's uh, Bethany settings. Like I said, I grab a lot of stuff off here. Uh, there's post Bethany tweaks. So your Skyrim Mini. Um, you can add these in if they aren't already here. And then she's got some specific prefs any, but this is going to be based on the graphics that are used. The E and B, uh, she doesn't have a reshade, uh, as part of the main thing. Uh, they're your, your custom any, like I said, it gets auto generated. Um, you could follow this if you wanted to as kind of a pretty good guide to set things up, um, even if you're going to run your own stuff. I, I, you know, I at least recommend reading it over. Um, like I said, if you don't want to scroll down and search for it, just type in the, in the search, uh, window. I uh, can't, uh, yeah, I should probably take my own advice, right? And there it is. So like if I had this down here, it should default. You have to scroll up a little bit, but yeah, to Bethany. Amazing tool. Uh, definitely takes some getting used to the first couple times you use it. Or if you catch on quickly, hey, good on you. Uh, what are we going to do? What else is there to do with this? We're almost at the three-hour mark. I haven't taken a break yet. Um, let me do that. Let me take a break. So, um, yeah, we're at two, two hours, 50 minutes. Um... I'm okay to continue going, whereas we start to mod, start throwing some mods in. You were going to say, yeah, win. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to take a break. Uh, so about five, yeah, between five and ten minutes or so. I got to get up and stretch my back and uh, get some feeling back into my legs and uh, get the tents out of the top of my shoulders, my traps or whatever, because that's what happens to me, unfortunately. Um... I'm actually pretty good to continue on. Um, we could start adding some mods. Uh, I can go down what I consider my core and essential stuff that I pretty much throw in every uh, every setup here in Mod Organizer. 
Uh, let me just expand this because we are going to probably use the full. Um, I can put it over just a little bit right there. I just want to see how far off screen it gets. Okay, that should be as far as it goes. All right, break time for me. Give me, uh, yeah, give me five, ten minutes, guys. I'll have my phone on me. Uh, what were the settings for arrow tilt? Oh, if it's on Lexi's? Yeah, it's uh, just all 0 0.7 Maladroth. It'll, it should be on hers, too, though. Um, if you're looking on the screen, it starts with number three under gameplay tabs. Make sure arrow angle tilt is 0 0.7. These, these three. The top one and the bottom one, by default, will be 0 0.7. It's the one in the middle. I think it starts at 2.5 for the third person. Uh, just for arrows, not for bolts. It doesn't. There's no bolt option for third person. So, I'm not sure if that's by design with this or if it's it, this third person uh, for arrow all, is also for bolt. I would assume it is. I could be wrong. I don't know. So. Oh, you're welcome. No problem. All right, guys. Yeah, uh, five ten minutes. I will be back. Uh, put some music on, and I'll see you guys in a little bit. And we'll continue on with some uh, essential essential shit that I always put in.
Okay, guys, uh, I'm coming back in here. Apologies about that. Also, I had to take my uh, back medication. So, uh, okay. So, you have basically cleaned your masters. You've installed SKSE. It runs. You have uh, the creation kit. You have some basic tools. You have loot. Uh, you have Xedit. Um, let's leave X set it up. From here, it's pretty good to have uh, a game plan of what you want to do uh, as far as like what you want to mod. Now, there's a couple things that you can do before you even get into uh, stuff like core mods. So, I'll, I'll go over a couple things. Um, I don't necessarily use them all. The Happy Pity, hey, welcome in. Uh, what is the song on my BRB screen? Uh, let me check. I'm actually going to put it up because I don't remember the name offhand, but I'll come right back in. Alright, it's called Nightborn uh, by uh, Vinswept. I think they pronounce it Windswept, but I pronounce the V, so uh, I just do. Yeah, Night Nightborn is the name of the song. It is off of the YouTube collection. Let me show you guys. So... Uh, in my folders here, I actually have their entire YouTube collection. This is the one that I was showing uh, Padinsky the other day. You do have to purchase it. It is off of Bandcamp. But it's like 15 or 16 bucks for 100 and how many songs? 168. They are all amazing. When I was modding on YouTube, this is what I would have playing in the background. Um, I should probably add that into Twitch if I'm going to start doing stuff like this. But yeah. Um, yeah, it's not bad at all. Yeah, it, it, it's like, and you could run. Uh, there's a mod actually on, jeez. Let's see. Yeah, the music. So there's Dream of Me. This is the new one. Uh, here's the original. Here is the additional music for Skyrim. This is the 2018. Let me endorse that because I don't know why. It took, when they switched over, um, when Nexus uh, did the whole are we going to do collections thing and they gave everybody a month, it seemed like all of, like, I know for me personally, all of my endorsements went away. I had to re endorse all the mods again. Anyway, I digress. Uh, has no requirements, um, but if you are running the Music Mods Merged Edition, this is part of the, it, so you're going to need this. But if you're just going to run this by itself, there are two files uh, with, with vanilla music, without vanilla music. Uh, pick which one you want. Then Dream of Me. I've used this before. This is absolutely fan-freaking-tastic. Uh, and I've used the no... I, don't like having the Skyrim music in here when I run this. Uh, it's almost a gig. Worth it. If you like this type. And uh, don't worry about copyright strikes or anything like that. This stuff is all... Uh, falls under the Creative Common License. I believe that's what it is. Uh, so you won't get a strike on your channel. I know because I ran this on YouTube without strikes. <laughs> so there we go. But yeah, to, to purchase it, I believe it's on Bandcamp. Uh, yeah, when I bought it, it was like 16 bucks. I don't know what it's going for now. But you could do a YouTube search for it, too. Uh, let me see here. The YouTube collection. And it'll be here. It, you might have to filter it down. Um, but this will take you right to their channel. So just, they have a ton of stuff. And by a ton of stuff, let me just the power. mute. Uh, go to their fantasy music. Got it. Um, yeah, we don't need that. Videos, current playlists, you can see. Uh, if you go to playlists, obviously it'll filter. But you can see how many. There's a lot of music here. So if you just want to sample some stuff that they've done, uh highly recommend they've been around for a long long time a lot of you guys are already familiar the newest videos are under here you can see just a day ago winter's fable a lot of stuff i haven't uh i've listened to bleak falls <laughs> they have one relaxing fantasy music it's a four and a half music uh, minute song yada yada 
there's a cheap plug for them. Uh, I shouldn't say cheap because a lot of people already know about it. Anyway, um, you want to have a good idea as to what you're going to do with your game right before you start to mod. So maybe you don't want to run Bethany. That's perfectly fine. Totally up to you. I, I like to run it ahead of time to get my setup to where I go. Those settings that she uses in Lexi's, I pretty much stick to the same. Uh, sometimes I'll tweak some things. Sometimes I won't. Next thing in Mod Organizer. You can hit uh, right click and go to all mods and create a separator. You can manually do this. There, Well, I, I've used both ways. I didn't start off doing the manual separators because they didn't exist at the time. They were mod added. Uh, but like if say my first category is going to be, I don't know, core mods. Just hit core mods and then you'll see a little category pops up. Then anything you download after this would pop up in there. Another thing you could do if you want to remove the separator, yeah, let's remove it, is come over to Nexus. I believe there's only one. I could be wrong. Uh, it's called the Lotus Separators. So SCP. It'll bring you to this. What this is, there are three files here. Uh, you need MO2. Don't worry about the guides. The Nordic guide hasn't been on here in a while, but the Yash guide is back up, for those of you that were curious. It's now called Northern Experience by... Uh, I don't know who this guy is, but he's he's done a lot of like patches, and he's got, you know, this guide. He's done some other work. Uh, has a lot of files. Anyway, um, you don't require either of these. You just require MO2, right? So three files... These are the three files. They set up a core base of already made separators. So O1 would be core mods. And it's very, very similar to setting up a load order if you fall into categories. I actually recommend for those of you that are new to separators is you can go in here, grab whichever one you like. So this is version number one. It'll shift everything to the left-hand side. They're numbered and named. The middle file, or second version, puts everything kind of in the center. And then when your mods load, they load to the left-hand side. So these are kind of out of the way. And what you can do is uh, start at 1, go all the way down to where it's after 44, it says Z here. Highlight them all, and you can change the color. Right? And the third one is a little bit smaller uh, in the center. The one I use the most uh, is this one, the middle one. Uh, but the way that you get these is you would go to files and they're all manual downloads because you have to put them into your mods folder. So here's mod tools. Let me throw uh, my mods folder onto the quick access here. Let me put it up above. Just so like I can go into mods. So here's SKSE. Here's the clean vanilla ESMs. <laughs> and wind is back. Welcome back. So uh, you can create a mod in here. You could create a mod in MO2, or you c I'll, I'll do this just for the sake of the video. I'm going to manually download this. Right? Let's pull up Mod Organizer. Let's go to the Downloads tab, right? It's in a zip file, so you can literally just drag this and throw it over here. It's going to have the little notification window, but what this is going to do and it's going to have every single one. So you would have to go one by one and check these, right? I actually don't recommend doing it this way. I'm just showing you that you can do it this way if you want to. Because if you hit manual, there's they're all going to show up. And it's going to say contents do not look valid, right? I'll show you an easier way to do it. Let's uh, delete that out of here. Get that out of here. We already have it in the zip folder here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to... No, I don't want this. Get away. We're going to create. No, we don't even need to create. Uh, let's just put the separators in our mods folder and unzip them here. Extract here. There you go. You can delete the archive because it's not going to show. And minimize this. And minimize this. 
And then when you F5 to refresh, you now have all of your categories if you want to do it this way. And you can see by default on the, uh, because I'm using the uh, dark mode with orange, right? If I'm, say I'm not running dark mode, right? Then when you highlight it, it's just gonna be default. But what you can do is go from one to core mode and then just hold the shift key down, go to Z and it'll highlight everything. You right click in here with them highlighted. Um, what is it, all mods? Oh no, I'm sorry, here it is. Uh, select color. And then let's just, I don't know, what's this pink, salmon? Is that what everybody calls it? There you go. So when you click on overwrite, it'll turn them to like a salmon color. And then when you click on it, see how it gets like darker selected? Um, what I like to do is I like to match it a little bit differently. So let's just select a different color. Uh, let's put it a green, like a lime greenish, right? There you go. So that way, when you select it, it's still dark. So you have that option. Um, I'm not going to use these right now, so I'm actually going to, uh, hold on, I need to keep the SKSE scripts, so let me unselect that and then let me delete everything else. I think I deleted my uh, clean vanilla ESMs, yes I did. We'll have to get those back. They should be in my recycling bin. Shouldn't be a problem. Oh, no, the folder's already there. Cool. Uh, so just drag and drop. It's going to overwrite. There are my files. Uh, recycling bin. Let me empty this out. Sure. Go back to mods. You'll see the separators are not there. Separators are here, but then when you refresh, you can either hit F5 or come down here to refresh. Now they're gone. Cool. So let me go back into. Uh, let's go dark mode with purple. How's that look? Not too bad, right? Hey, Panic Monk, welcome in. Yellow. Yeah, this, you know, I'll be honest, guys. My first two years of modding Skyrim, whether I was doing stuff on YouTube or doing it for myself, uh, when I when I discovered those separators, um, it was a blessing. Because my very first setup was very, very basic. I think I had, like, maybe 90 total mods, and it was just graphic overhaul i didn't have anything like ordinator or apocalypse um it was just it was an emb uh with an overall graphics i think i was using skyland but this is this was before john had the skyland all-in-one so it was all of his stuff um i wasn't running noble so it was literally just like skyrim landscapes and then you know there was some stuff that still wasn't touched because when he still didn't do windhelm and a few other things yada yada um but yeah, basic setup with re-engaged DMB. I was using Climates of Tamriel with re-engaged. And then when I found the separators, I'm like, oh, this is great because it's like a guide. And everybody has like a version of the guide. So like I said, I, I, I recommend them. Uh, if you're unsure, you can move the categories around. Like when you create separators yourself. Um, so if you go to all mods and you want to create a separator. So for me, uh, core mods right here we go and this is typically how I do it um I have my DLC stuff that's cleaned my clean vanilla ESMs is always underneath it SKSE I put above the core mods I like to have this up at the like the lowest priority it could possibly be and see if you hover over this plugins ESP ESM ESL this content window is not active by default, but I like you right click here and you can select this category. I like to have this because I like to see what 
this does. And there's going to be uh, mods that have multiple uh, options in here, or you know, things that they do. Wind steps out of the shadows. Done with work, so I'm heading upstairs. Hey, GP, I appreciate you stopping in, buddy. Uh, are you going to be streaming tonight? I'm not sure if I checked Discord to see if you put a message up. And if so, are you going to be doing uh, more modding or, or or what? And you got a bell, Maladroth? Not a problem, buddy. Yeah, I I may do I may do this uh, over the next couple of days because, like I said, I just wiped my list clean. You guys got to see me update to anniversary edition, immediately downgrade to special edition, <laughs> clean my masters, set up all the like delete MO2, delete Bethany, delete Dindulad reinstall those things you know set them up this is the way i do it um i i like to i would like to think that it, hopefully it would help you know some people seeing it visually those of you that have done it forever this is basically just repetition or you, you just enjoy my voice i don't know why though <laughs> anyway all right guys All right, well, GP, if you're on later and I'm still doing this, uh, we'll come in and raid you. Although I don't know how long I'll be doing it for. Notifications? Uh, so creation kit validated. This is from like 4 p.m. I don't need to worry about that. Uh, core mods. Let's get into this. Let's see how far over uh, mod organizer gets before it's off the screen. Let's move it back a little bit. I, I want the priority. I want the mod index to show. Priority and mod index. And I apologize about that. I am going to have to fix the uh, the screen for next time. All right. Um, not using the separators. I use core mods. So a few mods I'm going to pull up. Let's, let's also keep Lexi's here as sort of a a base. If you go under guides and well, let's see what else she has. Stuff I'm not going to be using. x Gen. Am I going to be using x Gen? I think I am. Do I have it? I do have it. Okay. And that's fine. Dindula, we already installed the 3.0 alpha. Uh, Z merge. I haven't set up Z merge yet, so you guys haven't seen Z edit. Okay, let's do Z edit. Um, let's get rid of everything. Let's delete it. Z edit's gone. Um, let's go to Z edit. Should be right here. All right, there's the link. Right click. So, uh, yeah, like I said, this is a a GitHub mirror, which is where I get it from. Uh, this seems to have the most uh, updated versions. You're gonna want Zedit uh, version 0.6.6.1 portable x64. You want this one, 55.5 meg. Uh, it's going to be a manual download. Let me get rid of the separators first, just so I could show you guys it's going to always be active. What we're going to do is we're going to drag and drop it right into the Zedit folder here once this uh, finishes, which it did. Okay. And then we're going to extract it here. It's going to do its thing. Cool. Portable. Uh, we don't need the zip archive anymore for anything, I don't think. So, what does she have? Let's get back to the, the Z-Edit setup, because there's one other thing you got to do. First, uh, you do have to add it as an executable to Mod Organizer. So, uh, let's go to Modify Executables. We'll add from File. It's going to be from our Mod Tools folder. It's going to be Z-Edit and the Z-Edit EXE. Open it. Uh, what I want to check is if she has anything additional that needs to go in the arguments. I don't believe so. Here's Bethany. We did this. We did this. 
No, nah, this is for Z merge. Okay, and if I do have any merge, I, well, I deleted them all, so we should be good. Um. Okay, this is right before E and B, so you can ignore that. Hit uh, hit apply. There we go. And then hit OK. And then under here, Z edit. Now it's got a little bit different icon. I think I may switch these around. I don't like having them uh, next to each other because sometimes I get confused. They look kind of similar. Um, so let us minimize this. Let's minimize this so you guys can see my MO2. We're going to run Z edit for the first time. Okay. And what it's going to do is you're going to have this screen. You're going to make sure if it hasn't by default, and sometimes the first time you run it, it's, it's going to always say Z edit, but it may or may not select Skyrim. If you have multiple games installed, like if you have Ellie installed, you have SE installed, or maybe you have Oblivion, and I'm not sure what else it has. So I don't have anything else but Skyrim. Right. So, oh, uh, there's an Oblivion profile in there. All right, let me close that down. So let me go back to her page. Uh, you're going to select Z Merge, and you're going to start your session, which is this option here. And you you see I've got the little crease in here. This is because my driver needs to be updated and my PC reset. Ignore it. I'm sure you guys have seen this already. Uh, start the session. Okay. Now, since I deleted it, I don't have any merges, but there are a few things that are recommended to do. I highly recommend using Lexi's advice here. The cog in the, uh, this is item number three, the cog in the upper right corner should pop up. Right. What you're going to do is you're going to navigate to integrate settings, which is the second one here. Your mod manager, it says none. You want mod organizer 2, mod organizer, vortex. Uh, if, uh, if you use NMM, please switch to at least vortex or MO2. I can't, I can't highlight it enough. Why in 2020, almost 2022, would anybody run NMM? You have to be a crazy person. Please run vortex or MO2. I will select MO2 because that's what I'm running. <sighs> Instant select portable. It's already in portable. You can see it over here. Portable or cache? Select portable. Okay. The downside is you can't minimize this. You have to go back and forth. Okay. Under mod manager path, fill in uh, the file path to your mod organizer to folder and then the mods folder. Now, I've had issues with this. So, mod. Uh, Mod Organizer, select the folder. See how it doesn't appear? Okay. We're going to do this differently. We're going to go to Mod Tools. We're going to go to Mod Organizer. And we're going to copy. And you have to Control V to paste it in here. Same thing with this. You can Control V and then it's what? Backslash Mods. Let me just double check. Yep, backslash mods. Okay, that's all you need. It used to be you could browse, and for whatever reason, maybe it's just my system here, but using the uh, ellipses or binaries to find them doesn't work for me, so I have to do it this way. So, okay. So that's the way to do it. Um, navigate to merge settings. Unless detect, auto-detects it. I've never seen that. Um, so navigate to... You're going to uncheck disable plugins. Uncheck that. Merge output path is going to be mod organizer. Okay. Archive creation settings. Uh, you're going to untick the create texture archive. The 2 gig... Uh, max archive file size is fine. Okay. Uh, max archives per file is going to be 999999. If you're unsure, go back to hers. Minimum files per archive. Minimum files per archive. There it is. 
Uh, create texture archives is unchecked. Well, we did that. We unchecked it. Create multiple archives. I believe you leave this alone. You do. Okay. Then you click OK. Now you close. Click OK and close. You're ready to merge. Now you are going to get a warning because this does throw uh, Zedit backups in here. There's nothing in here. Just delete it. You don't need it. Every time you run uh, the Zedit tool is going to create backups in here. So every time you run it, double check because maybe there is something that you need. Okay. If there's nothing that you need, unfortunately, just you have to go in. You can... Uh, you could well I, I just go into overwrite there's nothing in there to delete so uh, so Z edit is up there um, what's another one we could add in I think synthesis was one right but we're not gonna do anything with synthesis in today uh, so mod tools synthesis synthesis exe I don't believe there is any arguments for this it's not like uh, it's not like Dindulad in TextGen where you have to put dash SSE. Uh, but we're going to apply this. I'm also going to do the Ruddy 88 script. And I'm going to show you why. There are two ways to check for ESL flagged mods. But I won't show you those until we have a couple mods installed. So, um, shit. We have, all right, I'm sorry, synthesis. We're going to get Ruddy. So this is mod tools. It's under SSE edit. Uh, choose this folder, the 404, the version. And so Ruddy, when you download it, let me show you. Ruddy 88 ESLFI. Okay. It is going to be a manual download. Check your requirements because you need SSE edit. Okay. Manual download. And just follow the directions uh, that Ruddy has put here. Uh, you're going to go into SSE edit. You're going to go into SSE edit 04. You're not going to go into edit scripts. When you download it and you unpack it, it's going to have an edit scripts folder and it's going to have uh, the ESLFI bat folder or bat file, right? The bat file is the one that we want. Okay. So choose uh, the bat file, hit open. Uh, this one is a little bit different. So I am going to double check with what she has because I believe there are arguments. No, no, there's not. No, there's not. I'm lying. I'm lying to you guys. Hit apply. Hit OK. Um, I don't recommend putting... Uh, we could put synthesis up here. Put synthesis up on top of your toolbar. And I'm actually going to move synthesis uh, above C edit just so that I have a little bit of a continuity break between these. Okay, so you're not accidentally clicking on one or the other. Ruddy uses the default SKSE. So I don't actually recommend it because if you hit it, I know it warns you and everything like that. It's just something I do. Okay. Are there any other tools? Uh, TextGen and Dindulad. Yeah, let's add those while we're here too. So add from file. Mod tools, go to the Dindulad folder, open this one up. Uh, Textgen64.exe, open it, and in arguments you are going to, in lowercase, dash SSE, hit apply. Don't OK yet, because you want to go back and you want to get Dindulad. 64.exe, hit open. Same thing, arguments is dash SSE. Just make sure the binary is to where it is. If this is different, you just need to change it. You don't need anything in the start in with these. You could change the name if you just wanted to say Dindulad. If you just wanted to say TextGen, take away the X64. I leave them alone. I don't care. I know what those programs are. Just make sure in the arguments you have SSC. Hit Apply. Hit OK. These are also two others um, that I don't add because they have the same icon or it's very, very similar. Uh, what else? We could probably start adding some core mods, guys. Um, ooh, did not mean to do that. Apologies. All right. So first things first, I keep her guide up uh, as, let's go to mod installation part one. 
she's got some early notes on extracting BSAs. Now, if you're following her guide, you can ignore what I'm saying. Follow her guide. Uh, because there are specific profiles for Cathedral Assets Optimizer. Uh, Dark Theme is also available. I don't have any of her profiles in here. I just have the base stuff. Uh, you could also go to Tools and you can enable the Dark Theme for CAO, which I do like. It's nice and uh, green and white, or bluish green and white. I do like this. When you have her profiles in here, um, they are specific to her setup. Don't use them if you're not running her full guide. I just wanted to show that for you, to you. Another good mod tool to have uh, that doesn't get run from MO2, it runs separately, is NIF Optimizer. Simply what this is, it's a very small window here. This converts meshes from LE to SE very, very quickly. It does, CAO does the same thing, but it does more. Right, so if I'm only converting meshes, I use this tool itself, right? All you do is you browse, you would find like your mods. So say the clean vanilla ESMs was one, I would select this folder. Um, in here it would say clean vanilla ESMs. Do not select head parts. This is exactly what it says it is. Calculate bounds, clean skinning, remove parallax. You can always add parallax back in if you need to keep this the same, don't touch anything, then you would hit optimize and then in like a second or two it'll actually do all the work uh, and it will pop up a tiny little text window of what exactly was updated or optimized or cleaned. Um, useful if you'd like to see exactly what it did but really not necessary. Just know that this tool does exactly what it says it does without any issues. Uh, don't ever do your head parts with this unless you absolutely know what you're doing. Bethesda Archive Extractor. Fantastic tool. Uh, what can I say about this? Let's pull this over. Do I have... I probably do. Can we do it from the DLC? I don't know. Let's do it from the clean vanilla ES... No, these are plugins. I don't have a BSA. <clears throat> what this does, uh, since it's an archive extractor, anything in BSA format, so uh, BSA or something .BSA or textures BSA can be opened in Explorer. So you would go and like right click open in Explorer and let's just say SKSE had a BSA in there, right? You would literally take the BSA like this and drag and drop it in here. Now nothing's going to appear because there's no BSA. It instantly does it, and it also allows you to expand. So you're, you can extract it if you want to. Like if you create a folder on your desktop or elsewhere that you need to extract the BSA files, you can do that. If you just want to see what is in the BSA, like maybe you need to get uh, a specific texture, drag and drop the textures BSA in here and just expand to what you think you need. Like if it's like landscape trees and you want to get like uh like a, any any random pine forest o2 dds file you could find out what it is if you need to change it or alter it or edit it or yada yada uh same thing with the normal bsa there's going to be other things in there textures has its own okay if like uh for example i will do this here um i'll show you exactly let's go to uh, uh apocalypse Apocalypse Magic of Skyrim. Let's go to Downloads. We are going to download Apocalypse Magic of Skyrim. Main version only. I'm not going to do anything else with it. Okay. Apocalypse Magic of Skyrim. Install. Activate it. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, open up BAE. Drag it over here. Right click. Open this in Explorer, and here it is. And I believe all of Eni's mods are in BSA format. I believe most of them. So let's go into the normal BSA. You can see I drag it and drop it, but it's not removing it from your mods at all. But over here in the archive extractor, you can see I have an expansion icon. 
and you can see it expands to meshes and scripts. So if I go to the meshes, well, there's actors. Uh, there's one for Sacrosanct. This is how he has it, the blood explosion shockwave uh, mesh. Right? If we go to actors, let's see what's under actors. Actors, character, face gen data. You guys have seen this. Those of you that have edited face gen data before, face geometry. Apocalypse Magic of Skyrim ESP. This plugin right here. And these are all of the face gen meshes. You can take this and you can plug this into MO2 if you remember the numbers. I like to write them down on a notepad, but this is exactly what's in here, right? If you want to go into Apocalypse uh, New, this is what's in the BSA. You can extract BSAs using CAO, or you can extract it right here. Let's just say I want to make a new folder, right? And this is going to be uh, APO, CLYP, Apocalypse, C, Apocalypse Extracted. Let's just say that, right? So you've got, and you can do one at a time. I recommend doing one at a time. It's not going to affect this, but let's extract this. And since this is on my desktop, find it, Apocalypse Extracted. There we go. Select the folder, and it extracted it. So now if I go into the newly created Apocalypse Extracted. There's your meshes, actors, character, face gen data, face geometry. You could edit it this way if you need to. This is more of an advanced thing. Uh, like, well, maybe like intermediate to advanced, I'd say. If you're comfortable with doing it, you can do it this way. Um, let's close that out. And hey, let's take a look at the textures. So just drop the textures in there. You can see it reverts. It gets rid of the BSA. Notice nothing here has changed. The BSA stays intact. The textures BSA stays intact, although it says LSA because of the stupid uh, GeForce update. And what does he have for textures? Actors, character, face gen data. This is going to be the uh, face gen DDS files for Apocalypse Magic of Skyrim ESP. This is very important you see these in BSAs. Authors can sometimes forget when they put it in BSA format to include the very last item, which is the plugin for face gen files. Uh, Eni is not such a person. He is very, very good at packaging his mods. These are all the corresponding DDS files to the corresponding NIF files. So you would find uh, 0000F23D.DDS will also have a 0000F23D.NIF mesh. And it goes all the way down. Same thing. If you wanted to see what, I don't know, some of the Dwemer tech textures are in Apocalypse Magic. If you're curious, right? Uh, grad, can I actually check this from here? I don't think I can. You could do it from MO2 if you extract it. So let's just say we want to... Uh, we're going to extract the textures BSA. We're going to put it right into Apocalypse Extracted. So hit Extract, find Apocalypse Extracted, which for me is on my desktop. Right? It defaults to there. You know, Select it. And now when I open up Apoc Apocalypse Extracted, we're going to see a couple different things. Now we have the meshes, the scripts, and we have the textures. Okay. And again, go into textures, actor, character, face gen data, face tint, magic of Skyrim ESP. Here are all of your texture files for the same thing. I am going to delete this. I am going to uh, close out BAE. I am going to delete Apocalypse Extracted. I'm going to also um, get rid of this file from here okay and <clears throat> what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna run Cathedral Assets Optimizer I will show you a way how to see so if you go back into Apocalypse here open in Explorer like I told you everything is still in BSA format I'm gonna unpack Apocalypse uh, in real time with CAO so open CAO pull it here 
Uh, make sure you're on SSE, not TES5. TES5 is LE, SSE is Skyrim. What you're going to do is you're going to first open your directory. Uh, you're going to want to choose the mod you want. So it's going to be Apocalypse Magic of Skyrim. Make sure the folder is the same. Select your folder so it comes up here. Now, a couple things you're going to need to do. Since this is in BSA format, you want to extract the BSA. It says a warning. If you enable this option, the process will be considerably slower. That's fine. We also do not want to recreate a BSA, but we do want to delete the backups. All right. This is extra. We don't want to, well, create dummy plugins. No, allow compression, yes. Separate textures, BSA. Go to your meshes tab. Uh, advanced, always process head parts, but that's fine. We're not doing anything with the meshes. Textures, necessary optimization, because what this is going to do is it's going to optimize the textures in here. Not needed, because I believe they're already optimized. He doesn't have any animations, so don't worry about this. And I recommend highlighting log, because if you don't, if you're on BSA or any of these other ones, you don't actually see what's getting done in real time. Uh, so before you run the program, select log. I'll try to expand this so you guys can see it. And we're going to run this. I just want to make sure extract BSA and not, not create BSA is active. Okay. So... We're going to extract Apocalypse uh, of Skyrim just to see. And this is going to be a non-BSA format. There are a couple reasons why someone would want to do this. You can see it's running. And process is complete already. And it says done. Larger files, like Skyrim Realistic Overhaul, the one you find on ModDB for Special Edition, that's the one that has four texture parts. They can all be merged into one. You could do that through CAO. Uh, but now you see that, uh, let me close this. <laughs> let me refresh MO2 with F5. Now if I right click and I open Apocalypse in Explorer, you can see it's no longer in BSA format. Couple reasons. Uh, maybe you want to overwrite a texture. Uh, or you want to specifically see what textures are being overwritten. Now there's a downside to this. While it's nice to see what's going on, uh, say the textures are being overwritten and it's something with face gen. Okay, mods that are in BSA format load much quicker on larger lists than mods that are in loose format. That's what this is called, or it's considered loose format. They're loose loose files. They're in folders, but they're essentially loose. They're not in a BSA uh, format. So. We can revert all this. You could do that one of two ways. Uh, you could right click and reinstall the mod. Probably the easiest way to do it. Uh, you could disable, delete, remove this mod, then re-download it again if you wanted to. Uh, if you want to do it from CAO, make sure it's on SSE, make sure it's on Apocalypse Magic of Skyrim. You would want to tick Create BSA, delete the backups. Uh, we're not extracting a BSA because there's no BSA to extract right now. We just want to create a BSA. Go to log, hit run, process complete, creating BSA. You can see it did that. Okay. So now, uh, just hit F5 to refresh. I'm, I'm like very big on refreshing MO2. If you open it in Explorer, you can see now Apocalypse is now back in its original state that Eni has packaged it. You know. Not everybody's going to use these tools, but it's something to, you know, if, if you're, you know, so I, I look at like, uh, like, like Padinsky, for example, like he is in the process of creating a Wabajack list. So he's probably using most of these tools for specific files that he is either uh, editing, uh, creating, or um, deleting, potentially, or hiding files. You could, you could do that too. You could hide files. Um, I'm actually going to disable and I'm going to remove Apocalypse because it's not a core mod for me. It's a magic mod. Uninstalled. I'm actually going to delete it from here and I'm going to delete it from my recycling bin. So Apocalypse, anything Apocalypse related gets deleted. I like to save space as best I can. Um, 
mods can go, SKSE can go, mods can go, recycling bin can go. Okay. So, uh, let's see here. Shall we do uh, what I consider some core mods? What do you guys think? We're going on four hours. I'm okay with that. I am curious though. Hold on a second. Let me. Oh, it's about. The, all right. So that's my standing stone mod. Okay. Um, I'll check that message later. What do you guys think? I'll 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 show you. How about this? Since we're we're closing in on um. We're closing it at four hours. I don't want it to go really over four hours because these things can, can get long. I could sit here and do this for eight to ten hours, uh, probably taking a couple more breaks, but I, I don't want this first one to go over four. So let's just do a couple what I consider essential. I already have the core mods up there, right? Uh, so for me, uh, address library. This should auto-populate for SKSE plugins, okay? Get into the habit of checking requirements for everything. Okay. Just do it, please, for peace of mind for me. Because <laughs> um, when some mods update, you never know if they don't have a change log and it doesn't say. Because some authors don't add change logs. They may add a cha like a, a text change log in here, right? But I like to see this and I like to see what it does. Um, but always check the requirements because you never know. It may require something else. So this got updated on the 13th, so seven days ago. Uh, let's check out. This is the all-in-one for AE. We do not want this file. This is the all-in-one for SE. Check the file contents. It shows you all of the SE game versions that this applies to with 1597 being the last version before it swapped over to AE. You could do a couple things with this, and this is, I hope this alleviates some confusion with the address library mod. You could download uh, with Manager the all-in-one, and you should be fine running it. I don't like using the AIO. I like using the specific 1597 version which should be an old files or miss because it did it get archived fuck it got oh hold on attempting to mash attempting to match oh no it got archived all right well since i didn't have this downloaded since it updated i have no choice unless i have the uh exact url Which is at, which is fine. Which is fine. Here's SE, and I'll do this, and let's see if we can check this out. So, all in one, hit manual. SKSE plugins. Uh, I'm gonna deselect all of the other game versions. Let me reinstall this. I think I missed something. Yeah, these need to be checked. We just want 1597. Will this let me do it? It does. You know, notice it says version 2.0. That's because on here it's version 2.0. That's accurate. Um, it's in red. Uh, because the anniversary edition is version 4. Okay, so for, for those of you guys that get like, I, I know I sometimes hate seeing that it's not a current version, just know that this version is current because this is 2.0. AE is version 4, and unfortunately, Mod Organizer doesn't differentiate between versions. It's it's It knows that there's a version 4 that is current because it is, uh, but it's for anniversary edition, not for special edition. So get used to seeing some red in here. Although I'll be honest with you, version number doesn't really matter. As long as you have the right mod, you're okay. Do it how I normally do it? Yeah. So normally, uh, 
normally Carl, how I would have done it would have been gone into the MISC or the uh, old files it used to have at their file archive. Right? Oh, is it here? Get out of here. Archive files. Well, you can get it, I guess. There it is. 1597. Beautiful. Can't download it. Fucking archives. Well, you can see it's there. That's the one I would have picked. Uh, before this 13th date, uh, this was up in uh, non-archived files. It was either an optional or old. I think it was an old. So this is what I would have done. I would have come down to database for 1597 only. I would have downloaded with manager. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, I'm going to reinstall this. And uh, we're going to keep everything. We're just going to keep everything. This is what a lot of you guys are going to do. Okay. Uh, can we change the name? Now nah, we'll just keep it address library for SKSE. Okay. And we're going to replace this. Now if you come in here, uh, SKSE plugins, now you've got all of the versions. doesn't hurt anything. I'm just very particular about my version of the address library, but because it's now archived, I wonder if Lexi has a, uh, let's check. Let's, let's see if she has an archive version. She may. Address library for SKSE plugins. Uh, no, she's up to the, oh no, she did it the way I did it. She downloads the all-in-one and delete the following files or folders. Delete all files except 1597. Okay, so this is how you would do this. So this is how I would do this now. File tree, SKSE, plugins. Um, from 153 to hold shift at 180. You could do one of two things. You could delete them. When you follow Lexi's guide, she has you delete stuff. She has to have you hide stuff. If you right-click here, you could hide them. See, it says mod hidden, mo hidden. Okay, that means that these are hidden; they won't be detected, but they're also not deleted. I prefer hiding over deleting. It does the exact same thing. Okay, the problem is is that if you ever deleted something and you needed to get it back, you would have to re-download it, as opposed to just coming into the mod, selecting what you need to unhide. I'm sorry shift and right clicking and selecting the unhide option to get everything back okay what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this and I am gonna hide all these versions now because I've done Lexi's guide before I'm gonna delete them so now you have version 1597 and I'm gonna keep that version I'm not gonna change the name but when I go back into this file under SKSE plugins all I have is 1597 okay I'm back. Had to step away for dinner. Joe, hope your dinner was good. You really, uh, really o uh, ODC? OCD? I, I'm assuming that's OCD. Uh, but when it comes to versions, I easily ignore it. Yeah, the versions, especially now with AE, are going to be very, very specific. So, um, and I tend to use her essential SKSE plugins. Now, you'll notice she has some stuff above uh, optimized texture baseline. Now she uses SRO. I'll show you what Skyrim Realistic Overhaul is. It's on mod, uh, mod DB. Here it is, Skyrim Realistic Overhaul. There are some files, right? You won't go to reviews. You're going to go to the fi uh, I'm sorry, the files main page here. There are a couple. So be very careful if you ever use this mod. SRO 1.8 is original LE. There's only one mod for Legendary Edition, but for Special Edition, you have four. You have Part 1, Part 2, Part 3, and Update. You download all these separately, and then you change the name. You would follow what she says. You would rename each one as Skyrim Realistic Overhaul, and then you would, after you install the first one, when you go to install uh, Part 2, uh, it'll prompt you to replace merge you want to merge or you don't have to merging is just easier so that you have one SRO here I'm not going to use SRO for this I just wanted to show you guys what it is this mod is probably close to 
I want to say eight between eight and ten gigabytes total with all four parts for SE. It is a baseline texture overhaul for the game. Even with all the other uh, textures that you may add in for uh, separate things like Noble, Skyland, Skyrim 2020, Tamrielic Textures, uh, Mysterious Dawn's uh, AIO pack, Clever Charf's AIO pack, you will still see some optimized textures with SRO. Okay. Keep in mind, she has a special note for this. Um, ensure that they are named the same, so you need this to say SRO, because you have to run this through her specific Lexi no BSA in Cathedral Assets Optimizer. Now, I don't have that installed. I'm not going to be using SRO. I just wanted to show you guys. Okay. Uh, but I do use some other things here, like the NetScript framework, um, alternate conversation camera. So a lot of these things I would take from here, Oh, excuse me. Grabbing a quick sip here. OCD. Yeah, and apparently uh, Listectic. Yep. <clears throat> That's how that works. Me too. Me too, Joe. I did the same thing. Um, so let's see. Yeah, we'll grab NetScript. We'll grab Alternate Conversation. I do change my stuff to here. We already have Address Library. Uh, better Combat Escape. Uh, we'll grab a couple. So NetScript Framework Requirements. DLL plugin loader. So most people will go to this and open this and say this is what it is. It's by Math 321. Totally usable. Totally usable, right? SKSE is a DLL plugin loader. You don't need this. Right. And she also doesn't have any special instructions. Okay. But it is one of those things where you definitely want to check the requirements. Okay, you can use it if you want to. SKSE is it's just one less step. Uh, and version 1.8, I believe, is the latest. You can check here, version 1.8. Yep. Mod Manager download and download. All the DLL plugins give me this second download option to take. I hate it. Uh, so NetScript Framework, I keep it the same. You could change the name if you want to for Special Edition version 1.8. If you want to do version numbers. You could type in whatever the hell you want if you wanted to. I, I keep it like this. So manual. Looks good. Install. Um, we're going to place this above address library. I'm going to kind of follow how she does it. Alternate conversation camera. Check the requirements. It's just SKSE. Cool. This is for AEL. And this is where reading comes in handy. Those of you that can't read, I feel sorry for you. Use Wabajack. <laughs> no, because it's not like like it would normally say it up here in the description. Sometimes they don't even have it. There's just two versions. But luckily, the version number also says AE. You want special edition. That's 2.44. On her guide, it is also 2.44. We're going to download with manager. Cool. Instant download. Keep the same name. It's just an SKSE plugin with the DLL and an any. We're going to modify this. Uh, so if you go to the any files, well, here, let's, let's do this. This is a lot easier. Let's open this in Explorer and we'll edit it with notepad. So SKSE plugins, uh, so you guys can get a better view of this. All right. So because I know what to change, I'm already going to change it. We're going to change the camera speed from 500 to 1200. It's, it's a very nice speed to zoom in and out when talking to an NPC. Okay. Uh, forced first person, no. You also do not want to force third person. You want to have it open. Okay, so that's going to be zero. Switch target, uh, also no. I don't like, I hate, let me rephrase this. I absolutely hate when cameras switch between the targets. Um, it's one thing I've noticed with all camera mods that have this option or other mods that add in the B switch target equals. <clears throat> when you're switching between NPCs, especially if you're using the damn face light mods, it causes so many glitches and crashes and game bugs and freezing issues. Don't switch your target. Okay? You can zoom in all you want. You can, you know, do all that. But just, just a tip from me to you, the switching targets can be buggy. Turn this off. 
you want to leave it on and do it, by all means, leave it on. Uh, and the letterbox. I hate letterbox. Get rid of that. And they're the only other things that I change. Uh, so go to File and Save. The other way to do it is directly through here. The any files you're going to want. This is the any. Right? Conversation camera any. And then it brings up this box, which is a little harder to read, but you can see how my camera speed is at 1200. Uh, forced third person is now changed to zero here. Uh, switch target is also changed to zero. It's just harder to read. But if you're more comfortable using the uh, any editor to do it, you could do it. And then the save is the little uh, floppy disk icon here. And it says save when you hover over it. So Whatever works for you guys. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, we are right at the four hour mark. Let's get better combat installed. Uh, this requires address library. Doesn't matter what version. If you have the AIO, you're good. If you have 1597, because this hasn't updated for eight. You can see last update January 2021. This hasn't updated for anniversary edition yet. Not works for AE. This will maybe be updated but this is by Maxu. Maxu does a lot of uh, uh, animation and combat stances and things like that so I don't believe I have to change anything with this let's just check yeah nothing and then we'll get bug fixes requires the NetScript framework we already have it installed Bug fixes three. I think that's the right version, right? Yeah, I've been using three for the whole time. Oh, also hasn't been updated since uh, April 2021. So that's a mod that needs to be updated for uh, AE and is not yet. Bug fixes, I believe, has a couple things that you can tweak. Um, the fixability with conditions bug. I'm actually going to do this right from here so you guys can see it. This will probably be my last thing that I do for today. Uh, go to bug fixes open the text file and it's going to be the fixability conditions bug enabled true uh, you want this to be false okay. save it close it and that's going to do it for me um, <clears throat> if you guys felt found this any of this helpful especially the beginning part I know like a lot of you came in at the beginning um, to see me wipe everything clean, uh, to update to Anniversary Edition, to use the downgrade patcher. Uh, you guys got to see how simplistic it is. Um, now, I already had the downgrade patcher downgrade, uh, downloaded uh, because I didn't want you guys to sit there and wait for a 3 gig file to download while I just sat here and twiddled my thumbs and just BSed. Um, but you got to see that in real time. You saw how easy it is to run always grab the full patcher that full three gig file it's the it's it's the one that works it's the one you need um, if you're gonna play with the anniversary edition uh, try not to mod it too heavily try not to use a lot of uh, DLL plugins because Bethesda is gonna update that again because they have to fix the broken textures that are causing CTD issues in the current version of it so like I said expect an SKSE uh, version to break again for a special edition uh, but the SKSC team will probably have that done in a couple hours which means Halgari is also going to have to update his downgrade patcher that usually takes him within a day we don't have to wait long for these things much anymore uh, and then of course all the other DLL mods uh, like address library the ones that use address library unfortunately they will have to be updated yet again so it, while it is a chore, um, it's still a hell of a lot better than running Anniversary Edition. Uh, because all you're really getting is CC content. That's it. That's pretty much it. Some of it looks cool. I was looking at some... I forgot who, who did the video. I think they linked it in my server today. Um, God, oh, it was Haster. Haster linked this in. Let me show you guys this. I think it's by uh, Skypothesis. It was under vids. 
the Shroud of Cold Harbor. So they did, uh, it's an anniversary edition Blood Magic Argonian build. So I like this. I, I'm, I'm not a fan of a lot of the CC mods, but this actually looked pretty cool. The problem is it's not really modded. Um, I don't consider the Creation Club stuff mods. They are. I don't. I consider it official Bethesda content because technically that's what it is. Um, but it looked really cool. And these guys do really good vanilla builds. Um, they're pretty in, uh, intuitive. And they packed a lot of lore into this. Really good video to watch. Uh, let me open this link up to show you guys. Let's make sure the sound is off. Skypothesis. Let me go to their page. Here it is. So I'm subbed. I get notifications to them. Uh, really good for Skyrim builds. And I'm also going to plug Karn here. Uh, Karn's only got a couple builds out right now. Um, but his builds are basically everything I've seen over the past, God, eight years, uh, but on steroids. Uh, the way he goes, you know, like I mean, we were talking about this in the server earlier, the way he's been going about uh, his character builds, uh, it's all the information you need, all the information you want, none of the stuff that's like a little bit of filler just to kind of transition, but not a lot. His videos are very well done. The builds are fucking insane. Uh, his uh, his Shadow Mage Triumvirate build. Uh, I saw that, and you guys that have watched the video, you already saw the ending with Karstag and saw how OP that got. But just the build itself, and then, you know, say you want to model something off of it, and you kind of do the same thing. I would assume that the progression to get up to that level has got to be a hell of a lot of fun. Uh, the way and the way he's going, like he was saying earlier today, if he's able to get like maybe one a month out because of all the testing hours, he said it's about 60 hours per build plus, or every other month. Uh, he's he's the next big Skyrim uh, character build, whether it's YouTube or elsewhere. I firmly believe that. I'd I'd put five grand down on it now. So, Karn, keep up doing what you're doing, buddy, because I love it. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Um, just the way you present everything, too, is so professional. Uh, yeah, that's about it, guys. Um, I don't know when I'll be... What's tomorrow? Tuesday? I do have some stuff to do in the morning. Uh, if you liked it today and you liked seeing some mods, I'm putting a list together... It's going to be my own stuff. Uh, let me get this off camera here. Let me minimize MO2. Let me minimize... No, let me keep this up. I'll put this up and I'll just I'll minimize this for now. I'm going to be putting together just a basic... I say basic, God. Um, we're going to try to stick to under... <laughs> Wind, thank you for the bits, hon. You don't have to do that. I do appreciate it, though. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna, you know, sort of take my time and, you know, it's not going to be a wobble list like what, uh, GP's doing, uh, Padinsky's doing. Um, it's, you know, for personal use, but if people like it, um, I may put it up on Nexus. Going to be very, very simple to follow. Uh, very, um... What's the words that I'm looking for here? Modifiable. Is that a word? You're not going to have to follow it to a T. Um, I've used a lot of lists like that. I will say Lexi's is by far the most stable, but you really do have to follow it to the letter, and you really can't deviate. Okay? But by far, that's probably the most stable of the large lists. Mine's not going to be anywhere close to that. It's probably going to be half the mods uh, so it's going to give you room to expand um, what I'm thinking of doing is I'm going to run uh, probably Vokery uh, because I I'll be honest I'm getting kind of sick of Ordinator uh, you get too OP too quick and even with difficulty modifiers you're still OP very early on so you know maybe Vokery uh, 
I'd like to use Odin for magic instead of Apocalypse, because with Apocalypse, I am too tempted to use Okado's Recital. I know you can add Okado's in as a separate mod. Same with uh, Spelltwine. They are two separate magic mods that you can add in if you need to. Uh, I don't want to have the option for Okado's Recital, because I do play Mage and Vampire characters all the time, and it is way way too hard for me not to hit add item menu and just type in Okados and grab the damn spell or buy it from Farangar or whoever um what else do I, I'm, gonna, I'm using my own standing stone mod so man here standing stones of, Star, of Skyrim um I updated it yesterday I reverted the ritual stone back to its vanilla state so that it's yeah, it's a one-a-day ability, but it's viable. The magnitude's still 99. You could raise everything within uh, a 75 radius uh, to fight for you. And I also kept the duration the same. I was going to modify the duration to be longer, uh, but I decided to keep it vanilla. So all the stones work. Uh, they're all changed. Those of you that have seen the uh, notes that I've changed about it know that I took a lot of inspiration off of uh, Character Crusade. And I just want to kind of show that for those of you that haven't seen it. Um, I'll show you what I'm talking about. It's it's all nostalgia for me. And I love doing stuff like this, right? Now, I'm not the greatest when it comes to putting stuff in here. Um, what do we got? So Northern Ascendance was taken off the Ascendance uh, series that uh, Couch Warrior is doing, Right. And I just put Northern Ascendance for the Mage. Uh, Shadeling's Mask is another one. Folly's Burden from Ashes. Folly was the horse of Marl. Twist's Deception for the Thief Stone. Dawnbreaker's Saga for EJ. And Idasog's War for the Warrior Stone. I may change some of these. Quattro Carl. Thank you for the bits, buddy. Much appreciated. Will I be covering patching? Um, I will at the end. I'll, I'll go over patching briefly because patching can be a pain in the ass and trust me i'm i'm not the bl end all of knowing i i can do basic to moderate patches um but i still refer to other people that have really good patch tutorials all the time all the time but yeah i can go over it if you want to mysticism uh because of water walking mysticism is another good one too murdercrats um I, I ultimately chose Odin because I think the one Simon mod I may use is Ethereus. I haven't decided on the race the race mod yet. I may, before this is done, I may just create my own race mod with passives. I, I'm still not a fan of the one-a-days. I never remember to use them, and I don't like having one-a-day powers build up in your powers section. Do you know? It's just me personally. Um... We were talking about this earlier when I was we were looking at uh, Skypotheus's Hist build because uh, they use the Hist skin power with Equilibrium uh, and stuff like that uh, for a vampire. Uh, it works really really well, but I always forget. Even in the beginning of the game, like if I choose a high elf with um, Highborn, I think it's called, I forget to use it. And if I have it modded, I, I usually have another power like I don't know instincts from Campfire. To see enemies or you know maybe i have a shout enabled or something like that and even if i hotkey it i forget to hotkey it so i'm just I, i've never really been a fan of the one a days so maybe i'll make my own race mod before then i don't know uh we'll see but other than that maybe i'll use Ethereus because uh, i do like simon's race mod i've used imperious by eni um ever since i was able to use race mods but I, I i think it's getting to the point where we're going to have a nice mix of a couple different things uh of course summer mist is going to be in there i could port winter mist for a personal use i i don't i'd have to see what it's in there that's not in summer mist there are a few uh, enchantments that i believe summer mist does not have that are actually pretty cool um but as far as other magic stuff uh <sighs> You know, I'm considering Triumvirate. Uh, I'm still on the fence about 
some of the triumvirate stuff though i i like what a lot of it does like i said what karn did with his shadow mage build was nothing short of just freaking beautiful um but for me personally uh if i had to choose between forgotten magic redone and triumvirate it, it would be fmr all day just me and it's you know it's a script heavy mod it can be a little buggy there's a couple fixes you need in there for it but other than that it's okay i like it i like it better but who knows? Maybe we'll keep it on the lighter side. All right. I've rambled on enough, guys. Uh, mysticism actually makes it so that using dynamic magic... Oh, yeah. If you don't have the stamina, you can't uh, you can't cast a spell. But I don't want to make it so, like, it's it's impeding on the character's ability to cast. Like I said, like, with, with this particular list, I want them to be able to expand. So if they wanted to switch from Odin to mysticism, they absolutely could without having to remove, like, a bunch of patches. They could literally just switch magic mods and go. And then if there's a, you know, a patch between Vokri and Mysticism, then you would need that patch. But, you know, I'm sure they're on the, the mods page. So, uh, yeah. And I can't endorse my own shit. <laughs> can't retro files. It sucks. Uh, let me close that down. All right, guys, what are we going to do? Are we going to... Let's go raid somebody. Who's on? Who's doing shit today? Stupid side. He's playing Fallout. Fallout. Big Head's doing Elder Scrolls. What is he doing with Elder Scrolls? I think he was checking his... Now keep in mind, he speaks uh, in Portuguese most of the time. He will speak in English. English is not his first language. Uh, but this is like a... Oh, he's he's over 1,700 mods now. Yeah, his combat is pretty pretty amazing. I was watching this the other day. I was in his stream. Uh, and yeah, a lot of the stuff is pretty cool. He's got his combat down. To whereas I was trying to do some of the same things and it was really, really clunky. Uh, so we can we can um, we can go raid him. Uh, is there anybody else on? Let's see. Do you guys have any recommendations? Show more. Because I did, I did raid him recently. Um, Mace is doing Valheim. I'm not a fan of Fallout games, so I'm not going to raid any Fallout streamers, unfortunately. Even if they're like variety. I don't want to go into, like, like Dan's Gaming. Alright, so here's the thing. I think this is the guy that was doing, like, modding tutorials. And I sat in the stream for, like, a half hour, and then I just started banging my head. I guess he's been around for a while, but the information, I think Padinsky said the same thing too. We were both watching and we were just kind of lurking in there and it was just uh, banging our heads. And he, he's been around forever and he's got almost 3,000 people getting bad information. I feel bad for the new users that are in there watching it. I don't know. And I hate to say stuff like that, but like I get questions all the time as to like, well, this person said this and I have to be like, well, that person's fucking wrong. What can I do? Um, shall we raid Big Head? <clears throat> I think so. Cool. So for those of you guys who joined me today, uh, much appreciated. Um, all the support, the love, the cheers, wind, Carl uh Gemma for the for the resub um yeah I love you guys uh maybe we'll come back tomorrow try to be a little bit earlier in the daytime when it's a little quieter um cause I don't know if you've heard that there's tons of background noise here and uh we'll we'll kind of go down a list I you know I'll take recommendations for things like graphics but like Keep in mind, it's going to be uh, around a 400 to 450 total mod <clears throat> setup with an EMB. Um, but we could test a ton of stuff. Oh, you're welcome, Carl. Absolutely. <clears throat> I'm happy you guys are here. So, yeah, we could test a ton of stuff. Like I said, I'm not. I don't plan on producing a wobble list like like GP's doing. Um, but if you guys want to see stuff in game, or you want to see how it performs, or if you have questions or whatever. Or there's a tool that you haven't seen used but you're curious about. 
feel free to ask me. So we'll be back tomorrow. Joe, enjoy your night. Uh, let's go raid Big Head and uh, show him some love. I will see you guys tomorrow. Enjoy your night. Peace. <laughs>